G'day listeners and welcome to another episode of the Scouting Australia podcast powered by Australian Property Scout Buyers Agency. I'm your host Sammy Gordon and today guys we are coming to you live the day after the Australian Property Scout Summit. I've got some boys in the studio with me that were present with me in the summit. We're all feeling a little dusty, we're all feeling a little croaky but I'm extremely excited to be bringing this episode to you guys today. These fellas have built a pretty impressive portfolio specifically over the last few years. They have gone pretty hard at this thing. They haven't shied away from high interest rates and stripping equity and doing everything they can to keep moving their portfolios forward. And I'm extremely excited to bring these boys into the studio to share their journey with us today as well. I've been trying to rope them in for a while now, guys. And I said, look, the listeners, the Scouting Australia podcast fan base, they want more investor stories of guys with sizable portfolios. So hence, I finally was able to get you boys in when I knew you were flying in for the summit. So I'd like to welcome Aaron and Joe into the studio, boys. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. No worries at all, boys. I'm really looking forward to diving into this episode. I think there's a lot to unpack. Uh, And yeah, you guys have had a pretty wild journey. So, uh, and yeah, you've kind of been very ballsy with some of these things too. So I'm really excited to kind of unpack it and go through it all and give the uh, Scouting Australia podcast listeners some, uh, some great value today. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> so, boys, if you wouldn't mind sharing a bit of a backstory on yourselves, like where you come from, what you what you yeah, what you do, and then pretty much we'll feed into obviously how you got into property and started working with Australian Property Scout as well. Cool. Well, I can probably start. <clears throat> um, so when I think about it, like I've been thinking about this a bit recently. Um, you know, from a young age, I've always been interested in like working to make money to be independent, um, and I thought back like. You know, my first job was when I was 13. I was delivering papers, getting paid $15 a week cash to get up six mornings a week. 15 bucks a week? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's tra- so many like child labour stories in these, so in these things. <laughs> um, I did it for a year and a half okay. until I was like, you know, legal How old age, 13. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, every morning get up at 4.40 a.m. Yep. to deliver those bastard things. Took about 50 minutes to okay. do it, an hour from, you know, five o'clock when I collected yeah, the yeah. papers. But my parents taught me, rain, hail or shine, you've got to get up and do it. That's your job. Okay. Yeah. Um, and some mornings I didn't want to do it. They're like, <laughs> And it was pouring down rain. And then yeah. they actually got up and helped me. They okay. said, we'll drive the car instead yeah, of riding yeah. your bike. But that was, you know, it's... So you had the paper on. Just three dollars a day, three yeah. dollars an hour. Just shocking! Yeah, Holy yeah. shit! Yeah, yeah, absolutely crazy. shocking. Absolutely oh, crazy. Man. But I've got worse. Yeah. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> but then as soon as I could get a legit job, yeah. on, you know, on yeah. the books, I, I was only getting five bucks an hour. Okay. But uh, I did that when I was fifteen. Okay. And worked hard through school. What did, and, and what did you do at fifteen? So you're at school at fifteen. Yeah. And you were working. What was the job you were working for? Five bucks an hour. I was working at Fair Income Bargains. So it was like a you know a bargain two dollar shop. Fair Income Bargains. That's it. Yeah, wow. Yeah. In regional New South Wales. Yeah. So um yeah, did that after school and on the weekends yeah. and saved my money and yeah. um. Do you remember those ads that Clint's crazy? Clint's yeah, crazy. It actually bargains. turned into that at one oh, point. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, really? And then they blew up, to, eh? Yeah, Clint's. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, when yeah. I say blew up, I mean like folded, <laughs> like done. There's a, there's a good blow up. There's a bad blow They had the bad blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. No yeah. more $5 an hour. Maybe that's what brought him undone. Yeah. <laughs> so I worked, worked hard. And, yeah. you know, I think also from a young age, uh, my nan, she used to um, talk to me a lot when I'd go see her. And yep. she'd always say to me, you know, you've got to earn money, you've got to save. You know, it'd be a rainy day one day. I've lived through the depression, you know. Um, she'd talk about that. And she actually used to buy property as well. Okay. So she used this to is buy, your grandmother. Yeah, yeah she used right. to buy some property around town and just mm-hmm. flip it um, for some extra money. But And so, this was in regional New South Wales as well? Yeah, this is proper regional Do you New mind South disclosing Wales. whereabouts? Yeah, this was Wares Creek, a small town near Tamworth. Oh, near Tamworth. So, okay, yeah, sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah cool. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah, Good so I stuff. think that sort of instilled, you yeah. know, work yeah, yeah. hard, save, invest. And so how long were you out at Wares Creek for before you... Because you're a Melbourneian these days, aren't you? Yeah. From the land of uh, the land of the Jimmy, the land Mordor. of Mordor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't grow up in Wares Creek. I grew up in Grafton, New South okay. Wales, but yeah, my yeah. nan lived in uh, Wares Creek. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah, yeah sweet, so, man. No, we've moved out. I moved out when I was 18. Yep. I, was, I had, had fun in the country, but I had to get out. I had yeah. to get out of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Man, I feel like the country, like a lot of, uh, a lot of people – 
I speak to you when you kind of come, when you got that sort of upbringing as well, it's so different, eh? Like growing yeah. up out there, it's so different from the cities. Um, I was fortunate. I wasn't that far out of Sydney. I was a few hours out of Sydney, but I grew up on a farm. Yeah. Um, and so it very much, and my, my family was like a seven day a week sort of worker. So, and I was yeah. on the child, child labor uh, yeah. side of things as well <laughs> every weekend too. So, uh, man, I feel like it instills a very different sort of mentality and personality. And it's funny, man, going through this now, it's, I reflect on all the potties we've done recently. It's, um, it's uh, man, so many people have kind of come from that sort of upbringing that have done really well out of property as well. So I love it, man. That's a cool story. Yeah. What about you, Joe, mate? Give us a bit of background on, on yourself, mate. So I'm originally from Eastern Europe, from Slovakia. Okay. I uh, grew up there. I was around 20 years old when I um, <coughs> left for, uh, you know, in a hope for a better future. I, yeah. I moved to London uh, from a tiny little town around 3,000 people to a bit of a mega city, I guess. Of course, London. yeah. Um, and from there, that's where obviously I met Aaron. Um, and since then we sort of moved around a little bit. Yep. We moved to France and then we arrived in Australia somewhere around, I think 2008. Okay. Um, but I, I guess in the background as to where I, where I grew up. So obviously Eastern Bloc, yeah. you know, so I, I was born still during communism. Yeah. Um, um, bit of a child labor story as well. So <laughs> when I was around 15, that was my sort of first job. It was part of my school. We have a bit of a d different schooling system. Of course, yeah. yeah. And um, I sort of worked with my fa in my family's business. So my parents had a tour operator or travel agency, okay. uh, which they start with, I think, if I calculate around 500 pounds okay. or 500 euros, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they build it up into pretty big, big, uh, big companies. Yeah, so, um, yeah they, they may, I think they were like the third largest um, travel agent in Slovakia. No so way. They were really good. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. Uh, so I worked with them. I saw them working hard yeah, all yeah. the time. So they, uh, you know, in many instances, they would be coming home at midnight yeah. because they had a new season, new releases of catalogs and, you know, new, new, new tours to develop yeah, of and course. things like that. So yeah. Um, I and guess Slova sort of Slovakia is a very beautiful. I actually have never been there, but I've yep. heard so many good things, especially in the last couple of years. It's all these like little countries, you know, yeah, like Malta's just come into its own where people go to Malta and I hear about Slovakia and all that. Yep. Even, uh, oh, it's going to escape me now. No, Albania. Even people have been talking yeah. to me, they're going to Albania. Oh, oh, everyone thinks Albania, they think of uh, slavery, right? Like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. you know what I mean? Like people's slavery and all the rest of stuff. Yeah, look, but, Eastern Bloc is absolutely stunning. Yeah, and yeah. I'm in Slovakia. We have got some beautiful nature yeah. uh, around um, Tatra Mountains. Like we've got a lot of a lot of forests, a lot of yeah, mountains yeah, and yeah. things like that. So hiking. And, oh, is yeah, it Tatra Mountains stunning. in Slovakia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, good. Up, up yeah, the north yeah. towards Poland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sick. How um, good. Because yeah. a lot yeah, of a lot of Europe is uh, separated by mountain ranges, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah like yeah, all yeah. the it's almost like all the, the forced and borders and, and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You look yeah. at the Alps between like the Germany, Austria, yeah. uh, Italy, France, Switzerland, Switzerland as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah, like yeah, it's absolutely. funny, hey, how it all like splits yeah, it all up. So that's cool, man. Yeah, it's a beautiful part of the world, I guess. But yeah, so going back to the story, so I saw my parents, obviously they worked really hard. Um, uh, so I worked with them for a year, it was completely free. I couldn't, didn't get any money, to, didn't, didn't get any, any money on any payment from them. Um, so but you actually were worse off than Aaron, because so, Aaron yeah, was yeah, on $3 was an hour bucks. and you were on <laughs> zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's um, cheap, it's a lot. Yeah, it's <laughs> but that was, that was only, you know, it was a temporary thing. It was during <laughs> school and um, that's where I sort of started to, like I fell in love with, and this is probably going to be a bit strange with accounting because okay. I, I'm accountant by trade yes. or, you know, I started accounting at uni. And um, I really loved my time there and yeah, most yeah. of the time I was spending spending my time with the accountant and, you know, she was sort of um, teaching me around double entry bookkeeping and things like that. So it was really, I don't know, I found it interesting. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, does. I don't think, maybe, maybe Nick, maybe would, Nick, I was gonna maybe ask Nick you. would probably find I'll, it interesting, but maybe you, not many other what people. Do you, what did you think of Nick's session yesterday? It was absolutely day after fantastic. The yeah, 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 I really liked loved it. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nick yeah. was really good. I mean, yeah. he, he presented really well. Um, really interesting topic around, you know, what, what individuals or what people, what investors should be looking at in yeah. terms of... Um, uh, you know, how they should be looking at their portfolio in terms of tax and things like that. Definitely. So it was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, and I even like managing, it. maintaining the portfolio as well yeah. for ease of everything. Right? I loved what he showed around yeah. the spreadsheets that he's maintaining yeah. for you yeah. and for, for, you know, for what is in the school of property. So, yeah, yeah, it's really yeah it, was, it was crazy because he built that for his portfolio and my portfolio. Like for like three years straight, I rang him at tax time. I go, mate, this is a joke. And then two years, I was mate, this is a joke. And then a year ago, I rang him and I go, mate, this has to, you have to build me something. I don't want, this is what, I need you to build me something to manage this thing. And he goes, yeah, man, I'm feeling it too. Cause he's got a 20 plus property portfolio himself. So hence where that was born from now, man, the cool thing is obviously within the school of property, that's, that's part of what we give away in the toolbox, man. Another job after that. Was that paid or? That was paid. Okay. <laughs> and there was one euro a day, an hour. Uh, 
one, one euro, euro an hour. hour. But you can't even buy a euro look, with one euro an hour. You problem, need the two. Yeah, but in Slovakia it's a bit different. I mean, okay. we still had the Slovak crown then, so oh. it was it was a normal standard. Okay, okay, like, okay, okay. You know, for a, for a, a kid's minimum wage. wage. So okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So what was the second that job? Was, you that was essentially in a pub. So I was working in a pub. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was 16, 17 there. But <laughs> it did it was, things different on the Eastern Block, huh? It was a friend. It was a friend. My parents' friend's bar. Okay, it was okay. more of a. It wasn't like a pub for. It was more, a bit more upmarket, yeah, okay, essentially. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so you weren't was, getting the tradies walking in the front. No, 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 no. And I was mostly doing, you know, just behind a bar washing glasses okay, and things like that. Okay. So it wasn't like a yeah, crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. job. Yeah. Mixing cocktails and stuff. You no, no, no. I wasn't doing that then. No. It was later in my life. Oh, that's cool, boys. That's cool. So you did that, and so both you boys obviously worked young. Aaron's coming from uh, regional uh, New South Wales. And so what point did, did you transition and move over to London? Because you always met when, yeah. when Joe was 20. <clears throat> yeah, so I suppose it's a good part of the story, really. I went to uni straight after school. Yep. Um, always wanted to go to uni, but um, so I actually moved to Sunshine Coast to go to uni. Yeah, right. Um, went there for a year, studied business tourism because I wanted to travel. Okay. But actually I wasn't ready for uni. Okay. So um, I actually was too busy partying, having fun. <laughs> And um, so was my mate. And he um, said, why don't we just go to London? Yeah, right. Throw this all in. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Let's <laughs> just do that. Um, and because um, I was failing at uni too. Okay. So um, did that, save money and went to London. And so I was, would have been 19 at the time, okay. went to London. Yeah. Lived there for three years, met Joe in the time. Yeah. Yeah. And um, then so, we Sorry, you said you were 19 and you lived yeah. there for three years. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, met Joe at the time. Uh, we lived there for a bit, moved to France, then came back to Australia yeah. and um, actually lived in Brisbane for five years before right. going to Melbourne. And yeah. Just so you've moved around a bit. So you're, yeah, in, you're in full on regional New South Wales. Yeah. Then you're in Sunshine Coast. Yeah. Go to London, back to Brizzy. And then yeah. now you're in Melbourne. Yeah. What made yeah. you go south? I know many people go south. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, we liked living in London. Okay. We loved it. Uh, uh, got Melbourne's really good probably friends. the closest city to London, eh? Because it. it's got it's like that. It's that that's yeah. vibe, right? It's that it's vibe. Very yeah. European, yeah. I think. So that's yeah. really the attractive point for yeah. both of us, I guess. Yeah. 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 And it was like we liked Brizzy, but it was that. It was like we we moved from London because. It was too big, yep. even though we loved it. Yeah. But then Brizzy was a bit too, too small. small. So yeah. And Brizzy's, in Brizzy's matured a lot now as it well. Because like how yeah, long yeah. ago? That would have been 10, 15 years ago, right? Yeah. But in the last five years, I feel like it's really come – five, ten years has really come into its own. Because remember when I first yep. started flying up and I'd, I'd stay in Brizzy and I'd, I'd be working out there sourcing deals and all the rest of it. And it was always like – and this is probably going back five years ago. Like it was, it was coming on. There was a lot of works and stuff, but it wasn't like – great and then yeah. i feel like now there's so many things they brought in the vibes yeah. there is there is really good um yeah. you know a lot of the bar scenes and everything even the gc's changed heaps as well yeah. which obviously we are today so yeah, it's uh it's cool to kind of see so much of the country like gentrifying now eh, and being yeah. and being pretty sick man so yeah. it's uh yeah it's really cool to see so but Definitely. yeah you've ended up down south you reckon you ever come back north or you stay down well, there families up in brizzy and oh. we've got a lot of friends in um brizzy okay. gold coast as yeah. well so it's it's good to come back yeah. and see everyone yeah. Yeah. and yeah. it is changing i like being up here yeah. So yeah. uh, I don't know. The weather's shit in Mordor. Yeah. So <laughs> that is the part that yeah. we don't like. But the city's great there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Never know. The, yeah, I couldn't do the winters, man. I think the winters. And that's that's why I ended up leaving Sydney. Was I was just like, uh, man, as much as I like was lived there for thirty one years, whatever in my life, and I love yeah. Sydney as a city, and all my mates were down there, and just um, it was it was especially during COVID, and it was just so cold and rainy, and I lived three hundred meters to the beach, right, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. When the weather's good. But the shit you get all that the gale force winds off the bloody straight off the beach like straight in the house yeah. man it's just like oh like it was nah. no yeah. good man no good and i was just like but i was living inland like further inland before that and i was like that was just freezing during the winters and like it uh, sounds like i'm whinging a bit but it's just like every year just got like graded on me more and more and more and i'm like yeah. i'm just gonna go try it up there i've got no, no huge reason or no huge thing that's like kind of holding me back here yeah. um yeah man it was a uh, it was and morgs's family's from up here as well so um uh she was definitely jack of down there during covid because she couldn't even if she came yeah. back up, she couldn't get back in, sort of thing, whatever. So it was, um, yeah, it was a good little natural transition. It's funny how many people, like, I had people Moved last night, man, I had, it was funny how many people last night at the summit were saying to me, like, when we were wrapping up, they're like, man, I just want to move up here. Like, <laughs> it's freezing in Sydney, it's freezing yeah. in Adelaide, it's freezing in Can't Melbourne. Can't get out of the house. Bro, yeah. it's 26 degrees and the sun's yeah, yeah. out in the middle of bloody April, which it should yeah. be, but it's just, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, it's just like perfect. So, yeah. if anything is going to make us to move back up here, it's going to be the weather because Aaron is, um, of course, yeah, man. he really loves the heat. So, yeah. 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 You can't yeah. beat the climate, man. I honestly yeah. reckon, yeah, yeah. It's, it's an unbeatable, unbeatable 
unbeatable climate. Yeah. But, mate, we digress. Uh, let's kind of keep moving forward then and, and, and kind of start talking about even the first property and, and, and what you got into – what kind of got you into property initially. Um, and, yeah, talk through the first purchase and whatnot from there. I'm happy to kick off here. I think – it really came from um, me starting to like I, when I first moved to Australia. I went and started my degree, so I did a uh, Bachelor of Commerce, Accounting, Economics majors. Okay. And um, you know, as I was sort of going through a degree and, and learned about accounting, finance, business, and all that sort of thing, as I started to be a little bit more interested in um, in those things. And I think the first book that I bought was around um, was Rich Dad Poor Dad. It's probably the first book that I started reading. <laughs> it's everyone's so, turning point, I, isn't it? I know. It's, it's probably funny, it's it's one of the most famous books, I guess, that everyone picks up. And it's, you know, it's a, such a small book as well. It's, it's yeah. so easy and, and such a good read. Um, Often the best ones are, yeah, because yeah. they're as punchy as they just explain it. Mm. Like you look at Kiyosaki's books these days, they're, yeah. they're the size of a good steak, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. a few of them. That's Whereas it. Whereas like yeah, the yeah, old yeah. ones are good, yeah, short, sharp. Yeah, it was a fantastic read. That's awesome. And I think, and I think what, you know, at that time you started to, I don't know, you hear it so so many times, oh, you should get property, make sure you get it, get a property so that you can negatively gear it. And then you mm. read this book and it's like, well, this actually doesn't really make sense. Mm. Like you really need cash flow. You need money yeah, so that you can yeah. keep going yep. and you can buy things. You can get wealthy or you cannot get necessarily wealthy, but you can keep being rich yes. out of it. So um, I guess that probably was in, um, that was probably the first thing. And then you really picked up, you were really the driver for it after that. You picked up the book. Um, yeah. I, I think it was Barefoot Investor. Yeah, that and then Red Rich uh, poured out yeah. as well after you. And then I was like, okay, there are capital, like there are properties out there that, you know, you can get that have good cash flow. Where the hell are these? And the yeah. interesting thing about the Rich Dad Poor Dad though is it's an American philosophy, mm, right? Because yeah. obviously um, Kiyosaki is from, from America yeah. and Americans – they don't have the negative gearing sort of stuff, right? So no one invests for negative gearing. Whereas in Australia, yeah. a lot of the very old property, uh, I'll put it in inverted commas, experts, because in my opinion, looking at what they do, their strategy, they're not experts, right? They've been doing yeah. it for a long time, but I don't mm. think they're great at what they do. They're yeah. dinosaurs with their strategy, um, to be direct, right? Um, but it's cool that you guys kind of read that and realized, oh, it doesn't have to just be a, a loss-making decision to go and yeah. buy a property. And even though that's an American um, philosophy that we can apply it or look to apply it within Australia as well. So um, that's cool, man, that you guys mm. kind of like, even just reading it straight up, you just kind of realize like, why would we negatively gear? Like, why wouldn't we look to get something positive if we can? Yeah, and you look at it from the business perspective. I mean, which business is set up just to make a loss? Lose like, it money. Just doesn't yeah. make sense. 100%. Yeah. 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 No, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, and so then, and then, so Aaron started reading then and then it all started kicking off from there. Yeah, he fell in force. love with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fell in love like, with I've property. Find these properties, where do I find them? <laughs> you know, how do I find out about this? Started listening to podcasts. Yep. Did more reading, more podcasts. And then, because um, we were always going to buy our own um, yep. property first. And we were living in a unit at the time, <laughs> central Melbourne. And um, then we thought, hang on. And this is probably a classic one for people out there. A bit of a lesson to learn to. Here we go. Um, we thought. Instead of buying a unit, let's buy an investment property. Good choice, I think. But then we thought an investment property, we should buy a house. I okay. think also a good choice. Mm -hmm. um, but buy one in Melbourne. And then in order to get, you know, the first home buyers grants at the time, okay. we'll have to live there for a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, so where can we buy? You know, we didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And to get that, it had to be under 600K. Yes. So we bought a house in sort of middle um, west suburb of Melbourne. Yep. And in order to get one for that price, it had structural issues and <laughs> everything. Bro, like, that's the thing about the the first time money grants. I haven't like they haven't changed them in like at, at least five years. I did a bit of an update yeah. like five years ago, or whatever. But like they're still they don't really they don't reflect the current market. You know no. what I mean? Like you have to go yeah. out to the sticks to be able to, or just even regional hubs to. Go, I mean, maybe that's why they leave them at that. Try and get people to move out <laughs> yeah. to those sorts of areas as well, or drive a bit of population growth out. But it's funny, hey, they don't they're not reflective of a capital city what you can buy out there and no. in there anymore. So yeah, so you've got middle ring Melbourne. And you've gone a house, you've gone structural yeah. defects and issues and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Pretty bad. Yeah. And you've taken it on? You bought we that? We took it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought it. Yeah. And so we bought it at auction at the peak of the market. Um, oh, and we thought, did you know there was structural issues? Did you know there was structural issues? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we okay, got, right. We, <laughs> I think we thought, oh, well, we're not going to pay <sighs> the tax. The peak, yeah. But then we'll get extra money and just pay for the structural issues because we'll get it cheap. We'll do it up. Um, it'll be an investment one day. We'll live in it for a bit, renovate it, move back and rent a unit. <laughs> 
got in there. <laughs> we're like, oh, living in a house is actually great. There's it's layering strategies yeah. and then there's layering mistakes. And yeah, I feel yeah, like that's yeah, what yeah. we're going through we're right now. Going <laughs> through them absolutely. Let's yeah. go. And it's yeah. normally the first deal, right? Yeah. yeah. So, no, nah, this is good. This is good, all right? Yeah. Bought it at auction. Mm. And we, we kind of researched a strategy to be hard at the auction. Yeah. And we, we did really well with that. R and nailed the auction. <laughs> yeah. And then we got inside the house. Because it, it got passed in. Yeah. Like it didn't oh. meet the reserve. We were the highest bidders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they called us in the house. And um, we didn't have a strategy for that. No. Nah. Oh. So they sucked okay. another 20 grand. They sucked another 20 grand out of us. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, was it a bit of fo- it was FOMO, yeah? Because the people yeah, yeah, had, totally. you, had you missed out on a couple of deals. Just end of 2017. Yeah. No, sorry. It's, um, Actually, it was our first <laughs> first auction. We went first to it. We just got it. <laughs> We were just like, <laughs> we have to buy. <laughs> we have Boys, I've run, out of, uh, yeah, I've run yeah. out of room on my page to keep writing the mistakes. <laughs> I don't, yeah, that's so bad. It's not even finished yet. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's not finished. We bought no, it. I need, producer, I need a piece of paper. Bring it <laughs> <laughs> Bought oh. it. And then we thought, okay, we like living in a house. Okay. We're going to stay here. We're going to stay here longer than 12 months. Let's renovate it. Let's we renovate decided it. we'll stay there for 10 years. Yeah. Okay. So let's renovate it. Like, we're going to stay there for 10 years. Yeah. Um, okay. So and so we did. Like, to like high level to top yeah. level. Yeah, yeah, we did. To the point where it's like <laughs> you wouldn't find that Joe's spec way. in that suburb. So it's okay. kind of, we've overdone it. Overcapitalized. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we kind of realized, okay, we've done this wrong. So um, that's when, when we wanted to start investing. Um, yeah, we realized we need help to do that. Can, so, yeah. can I ask you out of curiosity before we jump into kind of like that investment start of the journey, how soon after you bought this property did you start to realize the mistakes in the process? Because you've done some research before, yeah? Like you've mm, done yeah. the right things and kind of realized different things. But as so often happens with first-time buyers, you were sucked in by the grants and all yeah. that sort of thing. And like the little, you know, what's seen as the benefits, which in reality, when you're in that price point in that market, there's so much heat in there because of that first-time buyer grants and all the things that you can access from it as well. So it's like a lot of the time it actually overinflates that market. Um, at what point did you realize that these mistakes... Is it not until years later or was it like within a certain, yeah? I think it's hard to pinpoint. I think we sort of knew we wanted, like once we made a decision that we're going to stay, yep. we were thinking, you yeah, know, this is fine. We'll just make this a PPR yeah. and that's yeah. totally fine. You know, we started to think about, okay, well, we'll renovate it to, to the level that we're going to be comfortable in. You still live in that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're not still sure how long for now. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, so it wasn't, so, so the mistakes were around, you know, I was like, okay, yes, we probably could have bought something a bit different. But at the end of the day, as a PPI, it was a pretty, pretty decent place where we were living, right? Like we were 30 yeah, we days overca- from- overcapitalized from a renovation. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the yeah. issue. <laughs> this is where the issue was, right? Like yeah, we, yeah. Just kept, we just kept pouring money into it and, you know, okay. we knew that it had structural issues, so yeah, we had yeah. to fix those. What were the structural issues, if you want me to ask? Oh, under- it needed to be underpinned. Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a pretty significant one. We Most actually put like, I don't know how many time. tons of concrete underneath that house. Is. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. You should have got big Jakey McGregor in. Sure. Oh, well, the concrete sure. pump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't know him then, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't reached out to you before then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, look, obviously we realized and it was like, okay, well, at least what we can do now yep. out of that yep. is, and probably a salvageable point is, well, let's just get some equity yep. Yep. once we renovated it and then and go hard on okay. in, with investing. Yep, so yep, yep. Okay, that's cool. what we did. Cool, cool, cool. All right, sweet. So that's the game plan from the, that's, 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 that's that point. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, other than like a realizing of the overcapitalization of the reno and, and obviously the structural defect side of things, with all the other things, did it take longer to kind of figure out the mistakes as you went through and realized some of the things or was it kind of only looking back kind of now, like this is eight years on, yeah. roughly seven, eight years, yeah, seven years on from then. I think we realized when we realized we weren't living in the best area of that suburb. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. And we yeah. should have bought just about anywhere else in that suburb. Oh, really? So, um, and we were like, why did we just focus on the tax? Like if it was yeah. going to be potential for PPR, we could have got a better house, yeah. for a bit more money, yeah. better area, better yeah. growth. Because you, li- you would have eliminated like all the first home buyers as well, right? Yeah. Like yeah. even if you went slightly above it. You, yeah. Even though like- from we had serviceable, serviceability to yeah. do it. Even though you, you would have foregone the stamp duty exemption and potentially the grant, but like if you're in a significantly better spot because you've also bought a little bit cheaper on that. And I think the FOMO really got to us at that time because we were both working second jobs. So yep. we had our primary jobs, then we were working second jobs. Yeah. I was doing like same. an Uber driving. Really? Yeah, yeah Saturday, Friday, shop. Saturday night. It was <laughs> a bottle shop, so we were like trying to save so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, okay- this is just crazy. The yeah, prices yeah. are going insane. We yeah. really need to buy now. So, yeah. Can I ask, how long before you, sorry, so you bought the first one. How far before that did you get your, Did you get the pre-approval? Like you said, that was the first auction you were over mm. at. How soon before that did you get your pre-approval? Wouldn't have been long. No, it wouldn't have been <laughs> long. It went out. 
Went for it, didn't we? Like a couple of weeks or yeah, less than a month. Maybe, yeah, yeah, less than, less than a month. How many properties had you seen? Four, oh, maybe three, four, more, maybe maybe, more, maybe ten. Yeah, maybe, yeah, but yeah, a lot. Of, some of those were out of our price range. Okay, yeah, so okay, ah, yeah, so that yeah, was okay. Yeah, so yeah. you made them because you were trying to keep under the yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is people they 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 either save for ages to get their deposit or they wait for ages to get the pre-approval and then they get it and they haven't done the research before. It's, mm. it's a very common uh, first timer thing that we see so often. Um, and um, yeah, they they kind of spent. It might take them two, three years to save the deposit or get the pre-approval or get all this stuff right. And then bang, as soon as they can get it, they go see the first property, go to the first auction and buy the house. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, I get it. Yeah. The, the process of putting it in there and putting the time in there. And hopefully for the, the listeners that are tuning to this, that maybe you're in that process of saving and you're six, 12 months out from a deposit, you should either be researching the area you want to buy in um, you know, or continually trying to upskill from that side of things or researching who you're going to work with to go and help you buy this property as well. So yeah. you don't just make them... And I look at like... I obviously made a mistake from that side as well, from a buyer's agency side of things. I've made mistakes sometimes with some of the purchases I've made as well, but it's, um, yeah, like kind of, <laughs> that's the most common one that yeah. I, that I hear of. And I see they get the pre-approval, they just buy something and then they yeah. get buyer's remorse three, six months, some of yeah. 12 months later when they're just like, fuck, that wasn't yeah, the right definitely. Deal. So yeah. no, that's cool. So you realize a few mistakes on that one, yeah. you need to outsource it. Talk me through that. I how think did, that how was that probably the be- best learning we got out of that really was, we, we really can't do this on our own. Okay. We need, we need assistance, yeah. you know. We just didn't have that, that much time to, yeah. to, to do all that research. Yeah, I mean, you even both work in double jobs, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're renovating? Still renovating no, at this point? No, we have haven't started. We were oh. about to save then. For so the, that was before renos. we bought the house. We actually renovated that house. Oh, so okay, we were, yeah, 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 yeah. So okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So, we so the investment that. journey, moving yeah, into yeah. that. Yeah. So um, did decide after that. Okay, I think we need to get some help. We need <laughs> yeah. to get a buyer's agent that people are talking about, yeah. you know. Um, and even though we we're putting all of our money into um, our house, mm-hmm. we thought, actually, I've heard a few people talk about SMSF. Um, yeah. I wonder if we can start there. Ah. So um, we looked into that and um, s- went through the process, set it up. It was pretty um, big back then as well. Yeah. Wait, wait sorry, what, what year is this? 2020. 2020. So oh, 2020. just, we were gearing okay. up for it just before COVID hit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just before COVID hit. And we're actually lucky because <coughs> we pulled our money out of our super funds just, just before, before they it tanked. tanked. Oh, really? Yeah. Literally like two weeks before that. No way. Yeah. yeah. That transfer went over. Well done, boys. Yeah, we'll just call it perfect was, timing. Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, timed yeah. that. Oh, we timed you it You guys so did that well. so well. You wrote us at the top. You cashed out. <laughs> we Amazing. did that. But we knew. Like, because COVID started already and yeah. we were like, we really need to get this money out. So yeah. we did yeah. want to try to Oh, really? It so you kind of knew something. We didn't expect it's going to tank that badly. That bad. yeah. Um, yeah. And even though it recovered, it took took a long Man, time. That's what so. I don't like about super. It's so mm. uncontrollable. Like it's supposed to be our like our our fund and our money for retirement. We have like so like when it's in a super fund, you have so little control over it and you get like like smashed on fees as well. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, and, yeah. and if they have a good year, then they take more out of it as well. It's like, if they have a shit year, you still take like a heap out of it anyway. Yeah. I remember when I was like making 60, 70 grand, I'd see how much goes into super and then I'd lose half of it in the fees and their commissions and stuff. And I was like, yeah. what the hell? This just doesn't make sense. So yeah. I love, yeah, I love that you boys. Yeah, I've made that decision to put, take it into your own hands and, and make decisions around that as well. Yeah. 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 So, so talk that was, us through yeah. that. 2020, we bought that, um, with a different buyer's agent. Yeah, yeah. So we had a recommendation from a friend. So we, we went ahead and just obviously did the uh, Prince Black call at the beginning to yes. start the process, um, set up the super fund. We bought our first property in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, that was in June 2020. Yeah. Oh, shit. So yeah. like perfect timing of Brisbane, like dead of the market, yeah. no one around. Yeah, that's when we were tailing it up something savage. Yeah, that's sweet. It. Yeah, so we <laughs> bought it. That was um, that was for four sixty two. That okay. was we just paid two grand over the market uh, list price. Market yeah. list price, okay. yeah. Um, we scored it. We didn't have to do anything with it. It's a what nineteen seventies house, I Maybe, think. Yeah, three 70s, by eighties. Yeah, seventies yeah, eighties. Three by one on a big block in okay. Alex Hills, yeah. eight hundred square meters. Um, Where, what, what suburb was that? If you don't mind me asking. In Alex Hills. Alex, Alex Hills. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so for four sixty two. Um, and we literally just looked at it, what, it's around 800 or so value currently. Okay. Um, and I think it's running for 575 at the moment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've had massive price growth. Yeah. yeah. But the did. rent hasn't done much. 
Um, I think we can go are up you, to six, you... ten maybe. We just had a um, recently a, a lease break. Okay. And so the tenants uh, that came in, we just wanted to give them on the same on the same rent yeah. just to make it easier. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to, yeah, on a, on a, on a break yeah. lease, yeah, as yeah. annoying as it is. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So did you just do like a six-monther on that one? Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> we did 12. <laughs> We did 12. For the 575. Yeah, I think we did 12. Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So 575 um, on that one. Yeah. Have you, how much, uh, just out of curiosity, how much equity have you stripped out of that one as well? It's oh, in sorry, yes, SMSF, so of course. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, um, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, yeah, okay, so that's in there from that side. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, sweet. All right, perfect. And obviously, we've, yeah, we've had nice price growth but from, a, from a rental side, yeah. What do you, so, oh, and market rent, you think is about 610? Okay, cool, it, cool. Yeah. Would be market rent. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And so what was the decision from there to then move and start going again in, in personal names? Um, so at that time, we were still renovating the house. So that's why we were like, okay, let's get into SMSF. We have some free capital, well, some um, freed up capital we can yep. use. Um, but by the time we actually got to to our own investment journey or investment journey in our personal name. Um, How long? It must I have think, been about seven months later or so. Yeah, I yeah. think it was... Yeah, around seven months beginning later, of I think beginning of 2021. Okay, yeah, it's okay. when we sort of started to. I guess we we, we got in contact with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the reason we did session. that was because I think whilst we were happy with our first yeah. purchase, yeah. like like Joe said, you know, we paid 462. It was advertised mm. for 460, which we found interesting. And the first buyer's agent we worked with, we got a deal in like a week, and it was a, like we were happy with it, but it was different to certainly what we experienced when we worked with you guys. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to be kind of pushed, make a quick decision. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we were just, okay, let's let's see what else is out there. And I think about that time, um, this is where we stumbled across you, Sam. Yeah. And um, it would have been um, investor of the year, I think. Oh, that yeah, time. of course. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, and then I started to listen to more of you and I was like, where is Sam? I want to find out about him. <laughs> yeah. And um, like I was just saying to Jai, like, I connect to his story, you know, yeah, I think we really did, yeah. this guy seems like the right guy. He seems like he's built a massive portfolio and, On the, other guy that we, yeah, yeah. and the other guy that we spoke to, we were talking about next steps yep. and um, he was saying, oh, look, you know, take your time. You don't mm. want to go too fast and, you know, make sure you've got enough money. I was wanting to do 10% deposits yep. and he said, oh, you've got to be careful. So I was like, hang on, we have to mm. see what Sam's like. And mm. Yeah, so we reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. cool. And that's where it all kind of started, hey? Yeah. Just before we dive on from that, I wasn't going to say anything until you brought it up about the fact of paying 462 and it was advertised for 460. And mm. I was like, June 2020, I was negotiating like 15 to 20% discounts on list price at that time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. again, I wasn't going to say anything until you, until you mentioned the same thing. Because like sometimes in a super hot market, right? Like let's say something gets listed and you have that, like we, we've been through say the last couple of years. Um, if you have that re agent relationship where, and sometimes we can call them, uh, and literally sometimes the relationships are that strong that they'll go, Get, the, get your contract in today. We won't present any other offers and we'll get this thing signed off tonight if we know the values there in that yeah. market. Let's say it was... 460k contract, but we knew, or 460k list price, I needed to move it quick, mm. but we knew it was worth 480, 490, yeah. something like that. It's like, bang, okay, we know it is. We get a sign quickly, we get it done sort of thing. Um, but especially if that was like a closed price, but in a in a market like that, or when we're first entering a market, there's always negotiating power. But like June, June 2020, it was like prime negotiation time. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that was the time where people who needed to sell sold, people who didn't pulled it off because negotiation was fierce at that time. Like you yeah. could go absolutely ham. So that's... um. Yeah, that's cool that you kind of had the, even though you felt comfortable and happy with the purchase, you could kind of almost like hear that voice. It sounds like was yeah. kind of ticking away in the back of the head being like, Ooh, and especially a week, right? Like We did for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a, I think week even is. <laughs> part of the story was that um, we needed to move on quickly because there was someone else offering cash for 60 for it. And we were just a bit like, you know, is mm. this real? I don't know. We just could've didn't feel yeah. it. It could have been. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting. Okay, all right, yeah. cool, boys. Um, sweet. So then, moving forward, you see me invest for the year. Resonated with the story. Listened to all the content. Early twenty twenty one. Talk me through what's happening here. So we reached out to you, Sam. Yeah. Um, you set us up. Um, we did a strategy session together. You uh, referred us to a mortgage broker. Mm. We had a um, good session with him and, and worked with you on, you know, what would the plan be? Yeah. Um, because we then stripped out. Um, would have been about 150 or so from our house. Yep. So that was at least something we got out of the Renos. Yeah, cool. Um, and yeah. Hey, sorry, how much? 150. 150. Mm -hmm. How much of the Renos did you spend on your house? Because that Probably was like about a 250. 
Okay, but, but not no, by the then. Truth not, is by, <laughs> not by then. It was a bit more staged. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was going to go, oh, that's pretty good. And then two yeah. still, okay. But that <laughs> was, yeah, yeah, yeah. we actually, that got valed up without them walking through. Okay. So, um, ah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, we just told them about what we got and, yep. yeah, the lender just gave that to us and okay. we just took it. So had, that it was finished. another learning for us. Yeah. Well, we yeah. never, over, like we, when someone ever asked us about what do you think it's valued at, yeah. we were like, mm, you know, we were going yeah. to, to the Too market. Conservative. Yeah, very yeah, conservative. Because yeah, yeah. they normally shave 10% off, so you always have a shoot of it so they shave it down yeah, we to didn't know that. where you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's yeah. funny. Um, yeah. Had Melbourne gone through – actually, Melbourne was kind of in the worst of it during COVID, hey, especially yeah. in that first – because Sydney was pretty bad the second 12 months. So kind of from like, yeah, March, April of 2020 through to early 2021, Melbourne yeah. was kind of the worst. It was kind of that exodus, right, because you guys had the like the 5K radius and the cops were yeah. trying to get oh, everyone and all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I remember second 12 months, we were, we were in it pretty bad as well. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, it extended down to Wollongong. It wasn't in Wollongong the year before, so we were sweet, mm. uh, yeah. like to, to the Wollongong Council. And then, But the second time around, second year round, it was. So hence why we made the move. Mm. But um, did you see price growth during that time or, or – Oh, that, like that's, did, did that's a fair amount of equity, 150K no, to pull No, there was definitely a bit of a growth because I remember that the, the value of our house went up a bit at some point yeah. and then it returned. Since were, were you guys so outside, outside the lockdowns? No, you, 30Ks out, no, you were, we were in, no, we were in, yeah, yeah. in the thick of it. And, and you had that much of a, gr- of a growth run? A little bit. But this was from 2017 yeah. to 20, uh, end of 2017 to okay. beginning of 2021. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we told them about the renos that we'd done. Yeah. So ah, okay. and the it was it was okay, based okay. on that. Yeah. Okay. So and you know, like we added a, a, a we bathroom, to, so yeah. we did quite substantial renovation. So. <laughs> Hang on, this was the point where this was the point where they were taking almost like uh, face value of what things were because they couldn't actually physically inspect because of COVID as well. It right? was yeah. shit. Okay, so all right, just all right, like all right. This makes sent sense. In yeah. Receipts and yeah. stuff, and said, "Yeah, we've done this." And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. So we've got a good, we've got ourselves a good, uh, a good equity release yep. from the first, from the primary residence. We're rolling around to go into number two. What's the thought pattern here of like you guys coming in? Um, yeah, how's a portfolio looking? How's it sitting, sitting so far? And like, what are, what are you guys wanting to pull the trigger on here? We did the strategy session. We did the yeah. strategy session. Yeah. Uh, it actually blew our mind, didn't it? Because mm-hmm. I think we went in thinking, you know, we should try and buy, you know, two, one, two, one three two. properties over a number of years. Yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, honestly, like you and the mortgage broker at the time said, well, you can plan to buy way more than mm. that over time. Yeah. Three to four a year. Mm. Yeah. Like in the, you know, at a, at a point yeah. in time. Um, and the goal was like, oh, you can actually have a goal for like 10 properties mm. in a certain amount of time. I was like, what? Mm. <laughs> like, okay. Mm. So it blew yeah, our it mind. Yeah, it was a less eye conventional opening, thinking. Yeah, yeah, really eye opening session that we had either with you yeah, as yeah, well yeah. as mortgage brokers. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right, so let's talk through the first yeah. deal then. We, we've, we've had this eye opening experience. We're mm. looking forward. We're, we're about to push hard. We want to get started on the new journey. Talk us through how that went from there. So, deal one, um, well, we. we um, signed up with you to do two. Yep. So we had the money there to go for two straight uh, straight away. Um, I think they were both about 330 we had approvals for. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Might have been more actually, 350, 350 I think. 350, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, yes, yeah, Sam had suggested we get one in Queensland and mm-hmm. one in WA. And I remember mm-hmm. at the time we were like, oh, WA. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hated <laughs> it back like, then, mm-hmm. eh? Hey? It was like the taboo mm-hmm. topic, like don't, don't bring Perth to the table. Yeah, we were <laughs> like, we want more in Brisbane. Yeah, we'd, yeah. we were like, you know, Perth never had any growth. But you backed us, yeah? Yeah, we did. We did. We did. How's that Absolutely. <laughs> very well. Yeah, very well, actually. <laughs> very well. Yeah. Let's talk through the first, the first one. We'll go to the first one. Yeah, yeah first one. Um, Brisbane came through. Um, it was 330. Couldn't believe that you could still buy a house in Brisbane. Yep. For 330 on a big block. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a three by one then. But with granny flat potential, mm. um, that was a, an absolute yeah. cracker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a it. cracker. That was yeah. mad. We loved it. So, um, yeah, we we obviously we took that yeah. um, straight away. We're like, yes, we'll have that. Um, <laughs> no and, brainer. Yeah, no brainer. And um, and this was a granny deal, right? We yeah. went through and executed the granny at the yeah, same time. Pretty much straight yeah. away. So let, let's talk through the numbers of that as well. So we paid three thirty. Was yeah. it three thirty? Three thirty two? Did you say three thirty? Three thirty on the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 330, um, we get, we did a granny for 160 all in. Yep. You know, yep. that would is probably council fees, everything. Yeah, that yep. includes the councils, eh? Yeah, 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 sweet. So infrastructure charges at the time were... 15 grand, 15, I think. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. junkie. Okay, sweet. Um, so I did that 
And um, yeah, like in the end, we Chunky. decided. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was at that point in my head. That's, I was like, <laughs> that's how it felt. It was like, oh, what? They're charged it that much? It definitely does, yeah. 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 Um, and, um, Queensland love to touch up for a, almost everywhere it does these days. Um, yeah. New South Wales and Queensland in particular love to touch up for a granny. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah, that's a good. Um, 160 all in, including that, is still a 145 build price. Yeah. <laughs> Can't that that anymore. Yeah, 100%. And what we did decide to do, this is um, probably before we get into the next one, even though that was bought straight after. Um, we thought let's renovate <coughs> the um, the front house as well as getting the granny done. Yep. So because the tenants um, stayed on and yep. then they left sort of just towards the end of when the granny was finishing. Yeah. So we thought, John, oh, like let's take a couple of weeks leave. Oh, man. Up there. Really? Yeah. yeah. Sick. And we, we flew up there um, and we thought we'll renovate it. We'll do what we can. Yeah. So paint it, you know, yeah. new window furnishing. Actually, I remember this now. Eh? Yeah. yeah. You always had it up there. Yeah. yeah we, had, we had Jackie. She sort of recommended to add a room. Yeah. So we added, well, in that we closed sort of, off section. Yeah. Because yeah, that was section. huge, man. That addition massive. in there. It was a massive addition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? So that was a like, big master bedroom out yeah. of it now. So awesome. That's really good. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, did a bit of uh, did you add minor the second renos. bath because you had the ability to add the second bath? Did you do we that? Haven't yeah. Didn't do it. No, yeah. but it's in the it's in the tank, eh? Because that do. that room is like mm-hmm. eight by four or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like massive. It's almost the length of the whole house. Yeah. yeah, and the backs onto the other bathroom from memory, or no, backs on the other bedroom. Um, there is a spot at the back that we took turned into like a walk-in road, okay. which could actually be a small, you know, ensuite, yeah, yeah, which yeah, would work yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. It's a four by two, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, cool, we could cool. Do it. So we did that. Um, it was absolutely hellish because yeah. we were um, working full time. We were both doing master's degrees at the same time. <laughs> took two weeks off. We thought we smash it over. Of course, it took longer. Um, and then we we're flying backwards and forwards for weekends between Melbourne and Brisbane. Oh trying no to finish way! This thing. We had my family involved and massive thanks to them. But <laughs> I think they wanted to kill us by the end of it. I think they did. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was amazing because we put in 17 grand of our money, yep. you know, yeah, doing yeah. it up, painting the kitchen, like new lighting fixtures. All in 507. Everything. Yeah. Okay. With the granny. Okay. Um, so 17 cages to do all that spruce work that you did yeah. on yourselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Cool, cool. yeah. And That's we, awesome. we got some people in to assist with yep. stuff too. Yeah. Like yep. New walls and stuff in certain spots. But um, yeah. Yeah. All in 507. I don't know whether you want us to tell you what we got it valued at. Yeah, go, of course. Yeah. yeah. So we we um, extracted equity on that twice. Um, yep. We got it valued at, not going to remember the time. 750 it was like. 750 grand. Like at the time, eh? Like on completion. Once we finished it the yeah. been, yeah. it's a bit after Or oh, maybe a year later or something. Because yeah, when the granny was finished yeah. as well, yeah? Yeah, or was I think so when it was with Post granny. granny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So say 12 months down the yeah. track. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Not a, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 12 months. So, yeah. so we were... F- 507 all in, did you say? Yeah. 507 all in, and we've had a valve at 750. 750. Yeah. Shit. We and take it to the max. We, we just got a, <laughs> we course, just did a big refinance process recently, which we can talk about too at some point. Yeah. But then that's been valved at 900 now. Now? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 900. Yeah. That's massive. Unbelievable. <laughs> what are. Uh, out of curiosity, what were the rents at the time completion? Because I remember we rented that house pretty good, and then obviously the the, the granny as well. But what it, what was the was the house house rents at the time too? Once we renovated, I think it was four eighty four eighty five. Okay. The, yep. fr- the, the front the front house, house. and yep. three eighty or three seventy was the, the granny the granny. Yeah. Yeah. But that that increased from three thirty from the tenants that were in there. When wow, we it's one hundred and fifty yeah. up. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's massive as a return. Yeah, yeah. Eh? yeah that's awesome. And yeah. what about now? What's and the we rent just for signed. Now? We, yeah, new lease. What's the front house is now five fifty. Yeah, and the granny's four twenty. Four twenty. Yeah. Wow. Okay, five fifty and four twenty. So you are grand. just under a grand a week. Yeah. Yeah. That's so five oh seven all in. Yeah. yeah. So ten percent yield. Yeah. Yep. That's it. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice yeah. work, boys. Yeah. That was good. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's I can't cool? believe we could take out that much out of it as well yeah it's crazy eh? man you know what i think is amazing about this stuff though right like i look at these numbers and like even on the way in it was a strong deal it was eight percent plus but that was in early 21 we're currently in early 24 like all right fast forward three years and um like three years and your your yield's gone from eight percent to ten percent you know what i mean and like whilst um Debt has gone up and interest is now more expensive and all the rest. I know you've extract, extrapolated some some uh, some equity, obviously extracted mm. some equity as well. Um, but like people so often will just look on that upfront of what something is, and even though that's still a strong yield, obviously at eight percent plus when you first buy it. But even at like a let's say it was seven and a half percent, right? But that we can pull some levers, pull some pull some things, and and make this thing you know even get to the eight, whatever. But even at seven and a half, and you get the rental growth, and let's say it was seven and a half, and now it's nine and a half or mm. whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh 
you got to take a long-term view of this thing because the compounding effect of both, obviously the growth, but from the rental growth, that's where people a lot of the time overlook um, that when that rental growth comes through, man, it's, it's it's crazy, you know, and this is proof in the pudding now that we're, we're three years on, you've got a 10% yielding deal that's had $400,000 plus capital growth. You're positioned 20 kilometers from a major capital city that's going through some super strong growth at the moment as well. So yeah, man, like I, I love this. What a, what mm. a cracking deal. Yeah, that was an amazing deal. <laughs> yeah. All right, awesome. And then so- while all this was going on, you obviously bought the the other deal, right? The WA one at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was only like a month or two later. Okay. Mm -hmm. why, don't you, um, why don't you talk me through talk me through the numbers? So deal that. two was yep. Um, yep, Perth. We got that really cheap. <coughs> we I think he told us at the time that we got that property. Uh, it was two ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two by four. Uh, sorry, four by two. And <laughs> that would be a weird house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a double ensuite. Be each bedroom's double ensuite. Right, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's um, going on in there. <laughs> it's a four by two. And um, what are you running out of these I, investment properties? Yeah, no, God, you don't want to know. Oh well, I mean the low, the one we got in. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The one that we got in Brisbane, yeah. I think that was a pretty dodgy one. So I don't, I don't know, I don't want to know <laughs> what was inside that fans? one. What was dodgy? And oh, the house. So like, every room had like an extractor fan. So yeah. I don't want to know what, what that house was. What, what was going, what was going on in the uh, in the big rumpus room? And then there was a massive fan, it was an, it was extractor a, fan at the back. And even the guys that came in to help with the renos are like, I wonder what this place used to be. And like, <laughs> we're wondering too. Like structurally, perfect. Yeah, yeah, Everything it was, was great. Yeah, it was brick. Everything, but I think yeah. there was some kind of business there at one point in time. Not well something the tenants dodgy. that we had, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, going back to uh, the Perth one. So that was. As long as it makes money, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So four by two, that was 290. Yep. And I think you told us at the time that we got that priced at six months earlier, like prices that were yeah, yeah, going yeah. on. It was, it was so definitely yeah. a nice discount. It was a really, sure. really good you guys were willing property. to move quick. I remember you told me, like, I needed you to move quick on the Brizzy one. And you said, if you need us to move really fast on the WA one, let us know. And I remember yeah. we, we, like, we called you and go, like, you need to jump yeah. on this thing now. Yeah. Like, we need to sign this thing now. It's a steal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that was um, rent. What was it rented then? Do you remember? It was probably only like mid threes or yeah, something. Yeah, it was like 295, time. I think, yeah. potentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Might have been awesome. But yeah. Market rent was probably mid threes, but a yeah. lot of time we're getting like it was those, quite, those it was quite low rent. leases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <clears throat> um, we didn't have to do anything to that property at all. We've done um, nothing to it. It's just growing. No. You've done growing. nothing to yeah. it. Yeah, nothing. Well, we had some damage, which well, yeah, we had a couple of um, couple of times that okay. pipes in WA properties they sort of run through the ceiling, as you mm. know, and they burst twice. So okay. we had we had we had to make a claim <laughs> recently because yeah, the ceilings were sagging. They actually okay. broke through. Um, and then Did the claim goes through. Yeah. The, the claim, claim was oh, okay. fine. Beautiful, beautiful. The moment the claim was finalized, the second it burst. It burst oh no time. way! <laughs> yeah. In a different Kidding. spot. Okay. Yeah. Did, so could you double we, claim it? Then no. we had no, oh, we didn't because really? it was much. It was much minor. Oh, so, no, so, it, was so. Oh, it hadn't damaged all the yeah, roof. Yeah, not okay. so much. So, but then after that, we just replaced all the parts. Yeah, in the roof yeah that makes sense. Yes, yeah, it was some something ridiculous. So. Okay. But anyway, so that... Um, How much up, was it to replace all the pipes in the ceiling? 1.8, oh, 1,800. Yeah. Oh, oh, bugger yeah. all, nothing. Yeah, that's so it wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all you've done to it, $1,800 yeah. ceiling repair. Like yeah, uh, other pipes. than that, it's yeah, been, yeah. honestly, it's wow. been a fantastic one. Okay. And that's currently valued, valued at around 650000 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just, just <laughs> more than double. In early 2021 as well. We, um, bought, we bought that thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so in three years, it, more than double. We actually bought it in mid-2021. Yeah. It was August. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So in two, like, yeah. So we're talking, yeah, we're talking like seriously less than three years on this yep. thing, two, probably two and a half years. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It was a good discount on the way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. When you, yeah. when you tell me that uh, you're ready to move quick, you better be, uh, you better be ready to move <laughs> quick because the deal's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, and yield on that one is pretty high. I think it was like around eight. No, it's actually nine. It's yeah. almost 10%. 10 what, what, now. what is the rent for now? It's so we're, going we're just going to, to go through a lease renewal. We'll probably get five sixty. Five, a week. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. definitely over five fifty. I actually own a yeah. four by. I don't know two by four. I don't know what you're doing. No, that, but no, I also own four. a four by two in the same yeah. suburb. Uh, and yeah, I think from memory, mine's mid to high fives or something like that as yeah, well. Yeah. So that's where it's definitely pushing. So we're pretty much yeah pushing yeah, ten percent on and a bread and butter that yeah. you haven't touched in two and a half years that has yeah. more than doubled. Yeah. yeah, that is insanity. Yeah, we stripped it though. Oh, we've used that's equity. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what they're for, but yeah, man. That's, that's what they're for. Like in the yeah. in the early part, man, the foundations that like we ran through in the in the summit yesterday, man. We we're talking about the recycling equity. Like when when you're in the early days, man, you you got to ride this thing hard because ultimately, if you can if you can pull those the, those equity chunks out and keep growing and building the portfolio and keep putting more and more of those style of deals in. 
Man, even if you even if you equity farmed it to the to the limits and you you know bought four other properties and when you sell it, maybe you don't even bank anything and all you do is you just pay that little bit of tax difference. But it's gotten you into four deals. It's done what it was in the portfolio to do. It laid the foundations, extended the foundations. You know, so yeah, absolutely. that's that's yeah. awesome. That's a crazy result, mm-hmm. eh? That's yeah, amazing, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. All right, sweet guys. So at this point, we've got the primary residence. You've got your SMSF deal. We've just done two deals and we've got a granny deal obviously within Brisbane as well, yielding off its head. Uh, talk us through the next steps. So that we bought that uh, second half of 2021. Mm-hmm. When when are we going for the next round? Not long after. Okay. We, we, um, we saved some more money mm-hmm. out of our yeah. own because um, we had some money left over from that equity release still. Okay. Um, saved a bit more money. Um, and this one was actually in our SMS. Oh no, I'm confusing them. Yeah, we were at the time. There was two more coming, um, okay. almost together. One we could buy in the SMSF again. Two more pre pre approvals. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. in the SMSF, one in yeah. personal. Okay, and one in personal. Okay, cool. mm-hmm. Yeah. So Jeez, you're going pretty hard in the SMSF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That a t- you said that like a lot of people were talking about it. that. That was actually a time where people, a lot of people weren't talking about it. So SMSF mm. was a big thing in the 20 yeah. teens. Uh, yeah. And then a lot of lenders uh, after the APRA changes, which was 2017, uh, APRA changes were 2015 and they kind of really started weaning off. And by 2018, 2019, 2020, no one was talking about it anymore. It was actually hard to get SMSF loans. It's only yeah. really come easy in the last year or two again. So that's cool that you guys were looking into that because mm. it's, it's such a powerful vehicle. SMS, yeah. I love SMSF, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, you guys, you boys know my opinion on on superannuation funds and whatnot, right? But being able to control your own super is a very powerful thing as you guys yeah. have shown here as well. So yeah. that's uh, that's cool. Like, you guys got in there nice and early. We're thinking about it early. Yeah. That's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, mm. we just wanted to go as hard as we could yeah. wherever yeah. we could. Yeah. So sweet. yeah. Pull money from wherever we could. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sweet. So so now we're going into, which one did you buy first? SMSF2 or, or investment three? SMSF2 came okay. in cool. first. Okay, yep. cool. Uh, so that one was um, Perth region, um, and uh, we bought that one at the time for three twenty-five. Okay, um, and that was a four by two. Okay, so not two by four. So no. the two by four was an anomaly. <laughs> Very <laughs> much so. It's a four by two in yeah. Perth. Yeah, three twenty-five. Yeah, same area, similar area. Um, similar area. Similar area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, man. And talk me through condition, rents. Yeah. But rough value at the time when we picked it up. Um, so that one was, you know, and actually hang on a second. So you've doubled down on Perth. Yeah. What happened Mm -hmm. to the fear of Perth? (laughs) The wild west. We saw the property market growing there, you know, um, not long after we bought, you know, so it started to take off and, um, yeah, it was, it was really even not long after that too. We got a Val done up on, um, that other property and I was shocked. What'd the Val come in at? Um, it came in at 400, um, how soon, how soon, how soon post purchase? I reckon that would have been, and I know I'm jumping a bit here ahead, but I think that would have been about six months after. Six months is yeah. valved up 120 up. Yeah. 290 to 410. Yeah, I couldn't mm. believe it. Yeah, That's yeah. massive. Yeah, yeah. Bread and butters, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was actually crazy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially when you guys needed the equity, right? Like your yeah. serviceability was, was, was pretty was decent fine. at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We just um, needed more equity. We needed the equity. So that's, yeah. a, that's a massive bump. Did you use the equity to get into, I know this, this deal we're about to talk about is SMSF. Did yeah. you use... Equity for equity from property two in WA, first one in WA. Yeah. Did you use that for investment three? No, that went into investment four. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, you said you saved up more cash. More. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So, mm-hmm. so, it's, so it's cash into into investment three that you guys yeah. have saved, and then SMSF explains itself as to yeah. where you got that mm-hmm. from. So, three twenty five purchased. What what was value roughly at the time we bought that? Oh, I don't know. At the time, it would have been. Th- high threes, I reckon. High threes? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I'm trying sweet. to think of that. Got a good discount there, I think. Yeah. Nice well. discount again. Yeah. 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 And it was a good property. Like, it, it looked was. good. Um, good location. Good condition. Yeah. Um, rents on it at the time? The rent, uh, I know that it probably ha- it had an existing lease for okay. another six months okay. or so. And yep. I think it, it wasn't where it needed to be. Yeah. Like, we knew we'd have to put that up to market yep. rent. But um, getting close towards the end of the lease, we did have a bit of a hairy one with that one because mm. the tenant stopped paying rent. Okay. Um, and we actually had to go to court for the first time with that okay. one. So, yeah. Um, yeah and I, It happened know. a lot in that. There was that transitionary period where rent started to really run. And because uh, a lot of people probably know, it, it's probably the wariness of Perth. Right? It hadn't grown for a long time. It had the little mining blip 2013, 14 and came back in 15 and beyond. It just kept coming back for like five, six years. And most people don't realize the vacancy rates, but that's like six to 8%, right? So. Yeah the tenants are just ruling the roost. They're being dogs, they're paying below market. And then in COVID, the government brought in this thing that you didn't even need to show that you weren't able to pay rent or you'd been laid off. Yeah. You just said, I couldn't afford to pay and there was nothing you could do. 
They yeah. just could stop paying. Like it was ridiculous. So then when rents finally started to run, these guys really was showing their colors and and we we it was probably the only period where I've ever gone through where there was quite a bit of that going on where tenants were coming to the end of their lease and they're like, Well, new new market rent now is, you know, they're at you know, three hundred, whatever, and new market rent is now four hundred bucks a week, and they're like, yeah. "Well, we can't afford that, so we're just going to stop paying." And then you're going to have to kick us out. And then, mm, yeah. and and we saw that a lot. It was an unfortunate, but it was. I think it was due to the environment of where they were and how long they had had it so good. Yeah. Um, but they just like started throwing it in the face of a lot of people. So, um, yeah, it was it was a very interesting time. But yeah, it was obviously it was, it was a little bit of that sort of happening. But again, it's all part of you know building the mindset and and having the thick skin of. Um, of the journey, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and yeah, learning we, the process for us. Yeah. We've never gone through it before. Yeah. So I think now we could just deal with it much easier. Anyway, yeah. So. And it's not a stressful, right? Once you go through something like that once, you're like, oh, well, this is yeah, what the event exactly. did. Uh, insurance cover the, the, yeah. So they covered that as well. Yeah. 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 So, so they covered practically everything. Yeah. 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 We so just, loss of rent. We, yeah. Loss of rent, and damage. And yeah. So no, no actual, no actual downside on this thing no. during that no, like minimum. No. Right? And yeah. we, we had it repaired very quickly and released yeah. straight away. So, and what was interesting at the time, and I think, it was a good part of the lesson because we were renovating the other property back in Brisbane region okay. yep. uh, and we were already so busy uh, with it. I was kind of like, I don't have any damn time for this, yeah. you know, and thankfully yeah. the property manager just took care of it yeah, right. all for yeah. us. So it was a bit of, you know, back and forwards working yep. with them, but yeah. you know, yeah, she's brilliant. Mm. So, yeah. okay. how yeah. important is the, uh, is the correct insurance policy as well like property manager one yeah. thing i wish i think is where joe you thought i was about yeah, to say yeah. that but yeah. uh insurances yeah like yeah. you gotta make sure you cover gotta make sure you're not yeah, just you're using the insurance. cheapest one because there's in particular there's, there's a few top tier insurance providers which are we obviously always recommend yeah. this is the best for this area mm -hmm. you use the right people it is not a stressful process to go through a claims process there's actually a lot of insurers that property managers won't deal with because they're so difficult to work with because they try and hold off from the claim so much yeah. they're good if like your house gets burned down because there's not much here. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can't really yeah. bullshit that one sort of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I totally like, agree. But, but when it comes to the, the tenancy style of things and all the rest of it, they hang on to it as long as they can. They try and avoid it as much as they can. It makes it a punish to try and release it, all that sort of thing. But when you're working with with high quality uh, insurance providers, um, yeah, man, it, it can mitigate a lot of pain, painful, you know, um, circumstance around the situation Absolutely. as well. So, yeah. so that's good. All right, yeah. awesome. It's good to know they paid out. Jeez, they yeah, paid yeah. out for you twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, how good? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, perfect. So then, boys, um, investment number three then. So we've just bought the one in Perth, the second deal in SMSF. We've got cash now for investment number three in the personal name. Uh, show us, throw us some numbers, throw us some locations. Yeah, so that one was also, so we went back to Brisbane. Mm -hmm. um, that one was a, uh, I think we bought that one in May 2022. Okay. That was a bit more expensive property. Uh, yeah. That was, I think it was 460. Yep. Um, that was three by two. Yep. And it was on a big block. Yeah, it was an 800 so, plus. Yeah, 800 so. plus block. Yeah. I remember yeah, you yeah, boys wanted right. to come yeah. back to Brizzy because I was like, we, we had did. the chat because I got the first one in here for you in Brizzy, the house in Granny. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, and then you, you said to me, you go, oh, we really want to get back into Brizzy. I go, oh, yeah. it's had a bit now, boys. Like, us, And we're very early still in Perth. Are you sure? And you're like, no, 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 no. We really want to. Um, and so uh, obviously I was I was, uh, I was very deep connections for myself in, in Brizzy. So that was uh, that was a good deal, man. I liked it that was. one, especially for you boys. That was a, it was nice because yeah, yeah, yeah. you wanted the land component. It was great great suburb where it was as well and it's performed pretty bloody well since then as yeah. well so so that was uh, may 22 you said yeah okay, so that was so may 22 almost exactly two years ago yeah exactly and i think that's um so currently that's renting around 525 yeah um and i think it's valid around 650 okay yeah, yeah. sweet okay so right. you paid for it f uh, how much is 460 460 okay so yeah. we're nearly 200 grand in two years yeah. or hundred thousand dollars a year yeah yeah yeah. it's pretty good perfect that's very nice yeah. uh your rents are probably a little bit low on that by the way i'll do a bit of a check on that yeah yeah i think we probably i think we, are we having it released or yeah oh yes yeah, so yeah. we just actually signed that one okay yeah. okay yeah. okay yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 all right yeah. beautiful but it's uh yeah man it's um it's uh, obviously the from a growth side of things has been it being exemplary as well it's a good, i think it was mm. a good choice like to diversify and go back in there because i know we obviously did, did do a couple more in wa anyway so it was good to yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah kind of get that diversity back into brisbane keep riding that we're obviously going to see that was pre brizzy olympic talks as well so mm. i was like um that's probably why hence i was a little bit more we're buying a little bit late into this, boys. I'm not 100 mm. sure, but then obviously when that sort of came out as well, it's, it's given it a nice bit of traction, um, yeah. which I think will pay off well for you guys too. So, so that's very nice. Um, moving I think, on, I think yeah, so sorry, because man. that that property is, is like we keep getting letters from real estate yeah. agents at least three times a year that they want to buy it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's in a re really good area. That that area that it is specifically like it's um 
it's funny because and I remember I was talking about this. I won't talk about exactly what the demand is uh, in the area or like the, the, the type of people that mm-hmm. kind of demand there, but it's it's uh, high income earners, right, are, are in strong demand due to proximity to a few things like immediately there too. Mm-hmm. So it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a good suburb, man. And I think from an owner-occupier perspective, especially like, you know, one of the strategies, like we, we, we look at the exit strategy, we're going to exit a property and who will it serve most, you know, the best most. Uh, I think that's one we're going to be able to, tweak to get a really nice final result when the time is ripe to sell that as well so mm. uh, i'm excited to see where that one kind of goes yeah. and what we end up banking on the back end of that thing as well yeah mm-hmm. that's cool yeah. beautiful moving on from that one boys how are we looking after that uh not too long after that at all we bought you're moving one. quick yeah. so you did three the year before yeah. change the paradigm yeah 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 change the paradigm from a couple of deals over however many years to the mm. three three a year sort of thing and we're, we're hitting it so you did that we literally did that the first year of working together right yeah yeah beautiful okay sweet we uh, literally a couple of months later we went for another one in uh, Perth yep. as well. So um, we bought another yep. four by two, which is great. <laughs> Three hundred and eighty we paid for that one, okay. um, and um, I think looking at that now, it's probably worth around the six hundred mark, really. Yeah, yeah, and and that one was um, uh, that you bought that through the equity release of the first Perth one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. 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 Yeah. yeah. Perfect. And. Rents at the time, rents now. Rents now, we've got that one five forty, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. five forty, and then at the time would have been. I didn't. I, could, I didn't think about that part before we came in. So yeah. What's that? <laughs> that rents at the time, but um, oh, that's all right. I think it was yeah. low four hundreds, wasn't it? Must have. Yeah. 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 Maybe even high threes. For like, we yeah. put it up. Yeah. We yeah, put yeah. it up. Yeah, we put it up quite pretty up quickly. There. Actually, it would have been threes because it went up to no, it was like three fifty. Went up to four fifty. Yeah. Right. Not long after we big bought jump. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big jump. Yeah. Big jump. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Anything in particular? Anything is just good, clean, solid bread and butter. Is there any levers around this thing? There's been nothing wrong with that place. No. We've done Absolutely nothing to nothing. it. How good it looks how good, it really good. How good yeah. are bread and butters, man? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you are like, as well always, like people always used to like be asking me about the cash flows, let's do this, let's do that. And I go, man, like the foundations of a portfolio are built on the back of bread and butters because there's so much yeah. less headspace. And they when they perform that like that, you know, like most of these things have done two, three hundred thousand dollars plus in like a two, three year sort of time frame, right? And so many people that overlook the power of what these things can do, plus also the mental capacity. It's not like you're trying to do the highest level deals ever, is buying the right property at the right price in the right location and then allowing that to do the heavy lifting for you. And yeah. it's not like it's it's a rocket science, it's just executing to a high level to then achieve something like this. Yeah. So that's awesome. Finding the right deals by you, I guess. That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what you're paying me for, brother. <laughs> 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 Oh, mate. Okay, beautiful. So uh, Val on that now, about 600000 When did you say we bought that? So July 2022. So again, sub two years, up 220000 yeah, So I'm making you boys like 100K a year. Yeah. I think I should up my fees. <laughs> 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 I think we pay you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. That's awesome. So Sorry, July 22. I'm just writing out my timeline. Yeah, I like yeah. to kind of track these things as I go. Yeah. I'm a very visual sort of guy. Um, man, that's that's awesome. So yeah, literally we're talking sub two years. We're up bloody, like, yeah, we're talking like 20, 21, 20, 21 months, um, mm-hmm. $220,000 equity gain. Yeah. Uh, and the rent's now up, yeah, to that point. I mean, even yield on purchase now is kind of like 7.5% on that thing. It's a yeah. bread and butter, like less than two years. Like, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. all right, perfect, boys. Where are we at from this point? So that's that's investment number four in personal names. We've got mm-hmm. two in SMSF. So we're six properties within there, plus one in the personal name. That's Where it. are we going to? You, got, you, you boys are going back to London. You're going to Ibiza. You're going for a <laughs> chill. What are we doing? You having a break? No, no, no. I think we. I think it was only like a few months after that. So from July to January 2023, yeah. we got another one. Jan 23? Yeah, Jan okay. 23. And that was also in Perth. Okay. Um, so that one was costing 325. It's a, um, a granny site. Okay. So three and one. Pretty, yeah, pretty big block. Yeah, three plus one that yep. is. Um, I think it's on just under four, four, 800 square meters. Apologies, pricing on 325? Yeah, 325. 325, yep. just under 800 square meters. Yep. Yeah, sweet. Val at the time? I think Val at, Val at the time was around 360. Yeah. It was a good deal. Yeah, yeah. that was a really good deal. It was a nice deal. discount and it was, uh, yeah. and it was a very nice granny deal. Well. Yeah. 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 I told you boys a funny story about this as well because I knew I was trying to find – You had a, we had the chat and we had the strategy on this one and – Budget was our biggest issue for a cash flow deal, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. you wanted to remain in the capital city, 
yeah. we had like 3.30 to work with and I'm like, boy, he's like, yeah. Yeah, there isn't yeah, that much for me to work yeah, with. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's right. and, and you boys, and I told you, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Oh, we're going to yeah. do our best to find it, but we're going to have to wait a little bit. And, uh, and I remember, man, like we um, – and when I told you guys this earlier, you're like, okay, that makes sense because the BA was a bit pissed at you, like internally with an APS because um, I made him give you, like he wanted the deal, he brought it to me, he goes, man, I really want to buy this thing. I go, I've had these yeah. boys on the books for like four months yeah. trying to find this deal at this price yeah. in this market. Yeah. The deal's gone to the boys. And, yeah. and <laughs> I didn't even know until before, uh, you, know, you mentioned that to me as well. But um, yeah, like it was, that, that thing was a stonker. And it was pretty much yeah. like the last at that sort of price point in, in Perth as well that we kind of picked up there too. So it was, uh, and brick, low set brick, yep. 800 square meter block. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. location has been firing. Do you, yeah. what, what value have you guys put on that? Uh, at the moment, I think that is valuing up to, oh God, I don't have that I actually. Right. 500. 500. Yeah. 500. That's 500,000 yeah. plus. Yeah. You can't buy, you can't buy a house that's, that's right under, yeah, under yeah, 500K yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gone wild. And that was in Jan 23. So we're yeah, talking, what are we in now? Well, the day after the summit, so it's April the 14th, yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever that is. Just, just, just a bit over yeah. a year. Cool, cool, 15 months sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like 15 months. That's like 175K up. Yeah. Still reckon you're paying me enough, And we Joe? haven't we haven't done <laughs> anything to that again. A couple of repairs. A couple of repairs. Yeah, look in your eyes just then. <laughs> oh. So nothing else either for that? No, just a couple yeah. of repairs. No, yeah, I mean, we're gearing up for a granny on that. But, yeah, um, yeah. You, know, yeah. you know what's nuts about, right? And, and this is where like a lot of time people ask me, um, you know, with, with, the, with the granny deals, are they in a specific, like are they in a heaps different region or whatever? And it's like, I still want granny deals to grow. We mm. still need to get the growth. And when mm. we're in the right growth markets, you're going to get the right rental growth as well. So then when we have that combination, it's a double whammy you're taking off. And like you look at it realistically with the growth you've had, it's pretty much the cost of a granny. In a little over yeah. 12 months, $175,000 yeah. gain that if you literally did an equity release on that, you could probably just build a granny almost in cash yeah. from the equity that you've made from that deal. It's really not about strategy. Um, <laughs> and uh, But boys, like you know, even though we've done a cash flow deal, we've had exceptional growth. Rental growth has been super strong out there as well. Uh, once again, an area that most people wouldn't have looked at. I didn't like Perth, uh, mm -hmm. even these sorts of areas within Perth as well. Not the biggest fans, but this is the thing. You look at this thing, performs exceptionally well. You've had barely any headaches on it. What yeah. tenancy side of yeah. things been easy? It's actually the same tenant. We just, we put the, just keep you know, putting it up a little bit. put the rent up. Yeah. Keeping yeah. it a little below market. To keep yeah, it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, due yeah. for a rent that. review. We just got it through yeah. recently and we, we kept it a little bit below because we thought we'd execute on the granny just a little bit sooner. Yeah. But, um, I, I was gobsmacked. They're saying like 550 a week yeah. now. So mm. it's you know, wild, man. Yeah. It's wild out there. just got that back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's actually, currently four thirty. I think that place is actually a four bedroom, one bathroom, not three. Because so when they sent it through, I was like, no, that's three bedroom, one bathroom. They sent through like it's actually like an extra office. There's the extra that room. Could be yeah, a room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's just probably a bit smaller. Mm. Yeah, but it's yeah, like it's a great place. Yeah, you, you know, know what I'm doing that? I, I can't. I can't remember the exact specific. Years, Fifteen months ago. I yeah. I see thousands yeah. of deals uh, yeah. a year, you know. Um, so even in terms of what I'm going through and crunching, rejecting, signing all the rest of it, I remember most of the stuff. But then when it has the extra stuff, I'm like, actually oh, surprised is... how much you remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's a bit silly. Yeah. You do a better job than we do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but man, I, I do remember there's 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 something in there. Definitely, there's something additional. You know what you need to do? You need to measure it up. If, it, if it's if it's yeah. the right, if it's the correct size, we've got a window, dude. We call it a bedroom. So mm, yeah, that's, uh, it'd be very interesting um, to see what that one is to get a, to get it checked out from that side because yeah. we start swinging a four by one. Yeah. You're closer to 600,000 than 500 right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that'd be very interesting to know from that side of things mm. where, where that one's at. And obviously, with the granny, once you put the granny out, the granny at the moment in the current market and that location, uh, depending on what you build, right? We've had the conversations around yeah. prefabs before on this body where yeah. we're doing a mid, mid 100s, um, or you do mm -hmm. a, a very nice spec granny, um, you know, again, uh, which might be a brick build or something. You might be looking at low to mid sort of 200s for a nice big product yeah. as well. So, um, yeah, there's a few things to sort of take into the equation from this thing as to, as to what we want to build on it. Um, you know, rent, you're going to, you guys are going to hold this thing forever, but obviously the yeah. performance is already had now, like you guys all in are probably going to be in circa 500,000 mm. market rent on this thing right now. If you had a finished product, yeah, would be over a thousand dollars a week. Yeah. So if yeah. this thing was finished right now, mm -hmm. you'd be over 10% yield and you've held it for tw just over 12 months. Like that's yeah. pretty ridiculous. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. So I love <laughs> it. Unbelievable, to be honest. Yeah. 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 So that's one of these things, man. It's like I look at these things, and obviously the, um, yeah, the rental growth and the price growth. That's why we still do them in the same market because you still want the same effects. Mm. Like you still want the rental, you still want the price growth, but obviously you want the rental growth to take you eight percent yield of what we're probably forecasting on purchase to now be ten percent yield uh, fifteen months later. If it was a completed product, which obviously we're about to go through the, the motions on as well. Yeah. So. Yeah.
Where are we at here? Is that the last deal? No, we had no. one more. One, one more, boys. One more. No, Not long no after trips that. yet. That was literally a month later. Oh, we had some trips. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it was like a month later. Yeah. This one was regional Queensland. First time okay. we were going regional. Um, but we were ready to do it. How did you feel it. about that? We felt fine because yeah. we knew after the Perth when we <laughs> yeah. weren't sure. We're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this has worked out amazing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, I mean, Perth was our second property. This was our eighth. So yeah. we didn't yeah. have any doubts yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. You're so, just like, yeah, yeah. APS yeah. know what they're doing. <laughs> they're fine with that. Yeah. And I think even looking at properties now when they come through, as long as it ticks the boxes that we went in for, we're like, yeah, yeah. quick buy, go. Yeah, Take 100%. it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Talk yeah. us through property investment six in the personal name as well. Yeah. Yeah. So this one was, we still had um, a pre approval for a bit more, but this one came through at 250000 Okay. For a mm -hmm. three by one on an 800 square block. Hang on, where, what uh, what year is this? So it's this December, would have been Feb, Feb, 23. Feb 23. Yeah, yep. just a bit over a year ago. Yep. Yeah. 250 grand. 250 mm -hmm. grand. Is this a uh, is this a one bed one bath <laughs> studio apartment in uh, Tamworth? Where's it? Where's Probably the same <laughs> price. Probably the same price. So what did we get yeah. for 250 thousand dollars 12 months ago? So it was a three bed, one bathroom. Yeah. It was a bit of a three a, beds, yeah. not a one bed. Mm. No, three no, bed. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. three it had a roof. Okay, it had walls. It did it? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It's a house. It has walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is a fibro place. But yeah. we were like, I'm surprised you can buy any house yeah. for that price. <laughs> so Man, I think that uh, fibro is a funny thing to mention, and, and I, I agree because yeah. it's one of those things that like it's worth mentioning, right? Mm. Yeah. Man. I've had fibro properties in my portfolio for 10 years, yeah. which I bought my first one in Adelaide in 2015. So just under 10 years. Yeah. Um, I've never had a problem with that property. Yeah, I remember yeah. you saying something oh, on some of the podcasts that you never had any issues with fibro houses. Man, it's one of the strongest, it's actually one of the strongest building materials there are. That's yeah. why they built so many houses with it back mm. then. I just didn't realize the health risk and the health hazards, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and one of the other big things is if someone damages it, you're covered by insurance. They're just clad yeah. over the top of it. So there's this big stigma around fibro. And mm. it, like- there is a devalue, comp you know, mm. a weatherboard might be worth, let's say you're 250K, a weatherboard might be worth uh, 10, 15 grand dearer. A brick might be worth 30 grand dearer. Mm. But do they rent that different? They're going to rent for pretty much exactly the same yeah. because a three by one in that area rents for a certain amount of money and very, very small um, difference. And again, you can go, you guys out there can probably listen like the, uh, or here, the, the price points are dropping and dropping and there's a reason for it. And it's because mm -hmm. borrowing is getting harder for these guys. Yeah. They're obviously pushing the limits. Um, they're taking on higher uh, interest rates yeah. to get themselves in the door, which mm -hmm. we had a conversation about. Do we sit on the sidelines? Do we build grannies? Uh, do we yeah. take a year or two out of the market and execute on all the granny sites in the portfolio or do we continue to acquire until we hit pretty much full service ability limits and then come back through and with what we've got left, then build the staff. And obviously it comes down to opportunity cost of if you are still able to acquire and build behind it, acquisition will always outperform a build on that front mm. as well. So whilst mm -hmm. we want to build when, when the time comes that we need to do it, the acquisition piece obviously outperforms, you know, like you look at the first, <laughs> like the one in January 23, we're up 175 grand in, in, in 15 months. Yeah. What about, okay, so, so this one, it's got to be on a tiny block, but it's a three by one. It's 250 grand. How big is the block? It's about 800. 800 yeah. squares. Yeah. Yeah. I exclaim as nice, if I don't know. Big, rectangular block. <laughs> perfect size block. Yeah. yeah perfect, perfect for, for a granny. A granny. Yeah, 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 and a yeah, decent a size one too if yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So boys, 800 plus square meter block. Yeah. Three by one. Yeah. 250 grand purchase price. And it had a new roof, Sam. I think the roof was replaced just mm. a few years before. Mm -hmm. And you know how much roofs are worth up there? Yeah. Like oh. 40 grand because <laughs> because like you can't get a roof or something because all the insurance jobs. So the, buying the ones that have already yeah, had yeah. it is perfect. It's the best. Yeah. No, Amazing. Good. What do you rent that for? It's now 400. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll be due for renewal in a few months. Okay. Yeah. And um, what's market rent? Uh, I haven't had the conversation yet with the um, property manager, but it'll it'll be more. I've started to have a bit of a look, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I'm sure it could go up at least fifty bucks or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three by ones in that. Yeah, you'd be you'd be looking mid four. We've got sure. a really good mm -hmm. tenant there though. Yeah. She's she's an older lady, so I also want to look after her. Yeah, you know? for sure. She's keeping it. She doesn't ask for anything. Yeah. yeah, you know. So she's yeah, just a good. good 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 tenant pays yeah. on time. Does she love the fibro? I don't know. She's fine with it. <laughs> yeah. I reckon she loves it. I think she's been there for a while, so yeah. she mustn't yeah, have she many issues it. with it. Yeah, she yeah. really loves it. <laughs> 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 no, nah, that's beautiful, boys. Mm. Um, acquisition since then, movement since then. What do you mean? Oh, sorry, one final thing. Uh, what's it worth? 12 months ago, we bought this thing. Yeah, yeah, so I think straight off the bat, it would have been worth 280 or something yep. easy. Nice little discount on the way in again. Yeah. And um, 
look, I think um, we've been having a bit of a look. I think that market's really started to move there. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure it's worth like around 350 or something. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. So like that, that mm-hmm. market in particular, uh, you can't buy anything sub 350 yeah. unless it's an absolute shit box that you need to put a lot of cash into. Um, yeah. yeah. Especially that block size, that style of house, yeah. uh, that many bedrooms, brand new roof. It's a new roof. It was only mm-hmm. built a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like these I'm things, good. they're all little, the little, little cherries on top. I think 350k is the, is, is the absolute minimum that things were. So again, Hundred thousand up in just over twelve months is uh, mm. is pretty impressive result. Yeah, so, yeah. well done. Definitely. So you, you're glad you did that instead of building the granny. I think so. We had the conversation, <laughs> yeah, yeah. eh? We had yeah, the conversation because yeah. you're like, oh, cash flows like that because the interest rates are going up mm. as well. So you guys had yeah. to weather a little bit, obviously, for, through that time. But like, you build a granny and like, all right, it might be finished by now, and you get an extra. 20 grand a year or 15, 20 grand a year. Now. Let's say 15 grand net cash flows because obviously you got a, uh, off that build because mm. you've got a, um, uh, obviously pay the interest on the on the loan for the build as well during that time frame, which obviously would be good. But instead of 15 grand in, in the net cash flows, you've got $100,000 in capital growth, you know, exactly. and an asset that we can pull the trigger on the same strategy on down the line when we when yeah. we have that breather on it as well. So Yeah, absolutely. No, very happy. So what are the advice? Yeah, man. Uh, that's, that's perfect, mate. So that's the end of purchasing, yeah? For now, yeah. Okay, okay. And at that point, we hit obviously a little bit of a uh, serviceability roadblock. Interest rates so high. We kind of scrapped the barrel with everything. What sort of happened since then? Because it has been 12 months. We've done a bit of strategizing. Mm. What have you What have you guys done within the portfolio to that time as well, to, the, to date? I, I think we took almost, well, I guess a year, not necessarily off, but, you know, we, and we probably talked about it a bit earlier with Aaron, um, you know, we just turned 40, in yep. that, uh, you know, in that year. <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> so this. So we started to feel a bit like, oh, you know, we started to sort of... Midlife crisis. <laughs> have, have a bit of midlife crisis. And, um, you guys want to enjoy a bit, yeah? Like, yeah. I, I, I remember. And yeah. we started to think, I was like, what are we doing all this for? Yep, you know, yep, yep. we really want to do something and yep. just enjoy ourselves. So, yep. um, yeah, we just, yeah, decided to sort of cool it for a little bit and had a big holiday. We went to US and... And Central America for a month, which was fantastic. And yeah, bought ourselves a not a Ferrari. <laughs> but it's a <laughs> nice that. car, yes. Yeah. So it's a nice Maybe car. Bought like a, just a you know, a small sports car. Yeah, yeah it's a Subaru BRZ. So. Yeah. I remember you always sent me the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, really <laughs> it was nice, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, we bought that cash, so we saved up for all of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, perfect. And I remember you guys told me you splurged a little on the uh the fortieth trip as well. Yeah. But man, I think this is a thing, right? Like, um it doesn't have to be sacrifice 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 forever like mm. you guys sacrificed and went hard you yeah. went and renovated properties yourselves which in itself could probably be in a learning curve would you have made a lot more staying in your job and doing that yeah. and actually resting the mind and maybe having a break instead and mm. getting paid what you're good at getting paid to do even though the renos are good and there's sweat equity and sort of thing what would the best outcome actually be from that perspective you know cost cost versus return as well on that end but you've gone extremely hard like we've got a nine property portfolio right yeah. mm. that you've generated a huge amount of equity you're allowed to have a breather if you want to have a breather. Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys push me. I, I push you guys and we kept, you know, working hard around this thing to actually go hard with it as well. And to build a nine property portfolio, you know, realistically from um, early 21 to realistically early 23, in a two-year window, we acquired eight of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. For a year, I think you're allowed to have a bit of a break yeah. and let some, <laughs> yeah. let some, let some capital build up. Cause like how much equity, like you look at that last deal, a 12 month window, we've made a hundred thousand. What about all the others? You know, like exactly. yeah. realistically, they've all probably made between a hundred to 150 grand, all the ones mm-hmm. that we picked up. Again, you look at the, the investment before that as well. Mm-hmm. That's 175,000 in a little yeah. over 12 months in that window as well. So I think when you like layer all these things on top, um, and this is why you guys probably heard me say this before. Like if you go hard early, you guys earned the right to have a break. You know mm. what I mean? Splurge on a 40th holiday. Exactly like you said, yeah. what are we doing all this for? You've got to enjoy the, the times as well, but don't enjoy the times as well if you're just doing a deal a year. And it's kind of mm. like a, uh, don't say don't enjoy the times, but it's like you can't expect the same result that these boys have achieved. We'll run through the net numbers in a second mm-hmm. of where you guys are sitting, net equity position, the size of the portfolio, the levers you can pull within that portfolio, which are ridiculously impressive, right? Where you guys have built. But you earn the right to have a holiday. You earn the right to go buy your, your, your cool little sports car in cash, you know? like, um, And even that though, man, like I look at that and a Subaru BRZ, man, it's a nice little car, you know what mm. I mean? Like I look back at like when I was at high school, like I love my Supras and Skylines mm. and that. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's effectively it. a modern day yeah, version yeah. of that, right? Yeah. And it's really nice. But you haven't gone out and bought like a 
um, G63, what did they call it? C63, like $250,000 Merc or something. Yeah, you could easily exactly. have done it. You've got yeah. multiple millions of equity sitting in the portfolio. You mm. easily could have done it, but you've still bought well on your means to have something that you guys are really proud of. Yeah. Go on a trip that you guys really enjoyed and still have a portfolio that has probably produced, I don't know, between probably three quarters of a million and a million dollars of equity in that year of growth mm. alone as well. So yeah. I think that's something to be extremely proud of and like, and it doesn't even need to be justified. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, you, but you just deserve the break. I'm glad you guys had the break. And then obviously, um, since you kind of got back from that, we had the strategy late last year and you've gone through a, a restructuring and you're kind yep. of rebuilding things. And you're like, okay, we're, we're, we're ready to go again. We've had our break. We're feeling yeah, good. Yeah, midlife crisis is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're ready to go again. Yeah, we're fine. We can go again. Yeah, I think we're pretty ready. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, boys. So give us a run through of the portfolio. Um, total acquisition cost. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, let me just have a Just while Joe pulls that. those numbers up, yeah, Sam. Man. I was just going to say, um, yeah, we've done a big refi. So a lot of what we bought, and I think the reason we could go so fast too, we, we went to 88%, yep. cent, okay. even 90 yep. with some of them where we could, but yep. we didn't have to pay LMI, which was great. Mm-hmm. Um, but that helped us move fast. So yep. when we've done refinance now, we're not doing it to 90, we're going to 80. Yep. So we've been able to Perfect. strip out, you know, mm. 220 about about that yeah. some savings maybe some of that's our own savings but around the 200k mark so, at the 80 percent level cool so you went you went oh right on the existing portfolio so you yeah. went you went really hard on the 88s and 90s to begin with to build the yeah. foundations you you maximize your capital you went as hard as you can and yeah. then you have since then obviously realized you can refinance and restructure the portfolio over at 80 percent drop yeah. your interest rates keep your yeah. servicing relatively strong and still release two hundred and twenty thousand dollars in net equity yeah. of equity yeah. Yeah. that's pretty impressive boys mm-hmm. yeah that's yeah. pretty cool yeah, yeah. Yeah. How does it make you feel, just out of curiosity? Like looking back on the portfolio, like that. Like, oh, it's just crazy. It's just nine property portfolio. Do you got you got ten rentals? Yeah, yeah. we do. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you've more levers you can pull and you did most of it in two years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's pretty ridiculous. I know when we when we when we, <laughs> when we realized the other day, I was like, I actually can't believe that we did yeah, we managed this so quickly. We yeah. were super chuffed, obviously, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it is unreal. Very proud of yourselves. Yeah. We yeah. are, and we yeah. made the right decision to go with you. So. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Really. But even like changing the mindset, you know what I mean? Like having the strategy and then just being willing to go hard on it. Some people I say that to and they're like, ooh, mm. come on, bro, that's pretty hectic. You know what I mean? But like yeah. you guys have heard, because you put something on the table in front of me, like saying that you're, you, if someone says to me, willing to go, okay, no worries, this is how we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 and then yeah. it's up to you if you actually want to go that hard. And I love it. You guys could sort of embrace it. And like you said, oh, three, four a year. And mm. here we go. Like, yeah. Yeah, I love that. to do that. Yeah. 100%, man. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So let's talk through some, some net numbers of the portfolio. Um, total acquisition cost. Yeah. So without the PPR, so that's around three mil, okay. just under. Mm-hmm. Um, market value current is around uh, 4.8. Um, so that's one point one point eight mil net equity. Yeah, one point seven eight. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Just, just that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's I think overall the portfolio sits around seven point nine percent yield. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sweet. Uh, on debt. Oh, sorry. On, uh, on, on purchase. Yeah, on purchase. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sweet. And um, uh, man, if you threw the primary residence in there as well, just out of curiosity, yeah. how much? Just how much equity have you got in that? Yeah. So with primary, the equity is. Just two million. Two million. Right. So you got two hundred yeah, grand yeah, equity yeah. in there. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are worth two mil net. Yeah. Yeah. Combined. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty impressive. We would never have thought two years ago we would be no. able to achieve anything like that. So that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Two yeah. mil boys. Yeah. That's massive. That's nice. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Strategy wise of the portfolio, obviously there's a lot of things that we've been working through recently. We I think it was only it was a couple of weeks ago we, we sat yeah. down and had a Zoom session, kind of strategized yeah. the next phases of the portfolio. Um without going sort of too in-depth into the exact sort of, I guess, strategy around it, but let's say game plan moving forward of acquisition or builds or anything like that. Like, what do you guys have in the tank? What are you guys wanting to do? Um, yeah, uh, even moving forward in the, next, in the next 12, 24 months and beyond. Mm-hmm. So we've got um, obviously the options to pull on the grannies. Yep. So executing on one of those might be an option. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the next stage of structuring the portfolio, we would look at another good capital gainer. Yep. So good bread and butter. Yeah. Um, so you're going to pair a, a, a granny build with another uh, equity, per, like an equity yeah. plate, right? So bread and butter, nice solid bread mm-hmm. and butter. Yeah. Nice. Yep. So that, that, should be, that should be able to be done pretty soon. So yep. we're pretty yep. excited about that. Um, 
Uh, so another thing we're also thinking about, which we haven't actually discussed with you fully yet, Sam. But Here I we think, go. Um, just throw me on the coals straight on, on the coals. <laughs> so I, I can't roast you. <laughs> I think it's testament to yesterday, hey? okay. coming up to the summit, yep. you know, yep. and actually just being part of it, yep. being there with everyone, being there with like-minded people where you can actually have a yarn, strategize, hear from each other yeah. um, and taking some of the learnings like there was the session around – treating your portfolio or your investments like a business, mm-hmm. you know, and there was the chart up there showing yeah. the growth, the, the flows and the dips of um, growth across Australian capital cities. And if you just left your money where it was mm. during that period. So, you know, we made some mistakes with our PPR. Um, mm-hmm. I think we have started to think about, do we really want to live there or do we want to move closer into the city? Yeah. Um, which we're, is the place we like and yeah. where we used to live. Um, but to do that, we're not going to sell it and buy something else that's significantly more now because yeah. that'll just kill our investment journey. journey. Yeah. Yeah. So we're contemplating with the idea of rent vesting, but um, it's it, there's Tossing there's it withdrawal up. symptoms because yeah. you put a lot into your PPR. Yeah. But seeing it yesterday and hearing that so many other people are doing it, mm. and it could be a, the vehicle to really push it forward. Yeah. Mm. We're starting to think. Yeah, about and a that couple too. of couple of driving forces for that as well. Like one of them is obviously continuing with the journey. Mm-hmm. And just keep investing. So obviously it'll free up some debt for us um, so we can keep going. And then the second part is we, we, we're starting to consider whether, you know, whether the location we're in is the right location or whether we want to move somewhere else. So, yep. yeah. yeah, somewhere a little bit more closer to the city. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay, mm-hmm. sweet. So, yeah, you're going through that at the moment to then figure out next steps and what you guys want to do from there as well. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah. What's, a, what, what's, a, what's a goal that you're chasing for the listeners? If you don't mind disclosing, sharing. Well, I want to be retired by 2030, Sam. I want Here to be one of those go. 500. So On the stage. And I suppose retired means something different for everyone, doesn't 100%. it? 100%. So I'm, I think we both are. I don't want to talk for Joe, but we're pretty active people yep. and we'll always yep. be doing something. Yep. So I'm not going to just go sit on the beach and do nothing. Yep. Um, that might be part of it yeah. at some point. But yep. um, There's nothing wrong with a bit of downtime of it, as well. a bit more yeah. of it yeah. than yeah. what we currently probably do. But then still being able to go and uh, – are there beaches in Melbourne? There are. There's some beautiful beaches in Victoria. A bit cold though. <laughs> Be able to come up here, go wherever you want, go overseas, you know. So um, even Mordor has beaches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. It's got to watch out for you Jimmy's uh, pasty body. You get blinded by that thing. You know, <laughs> you know, you know where Aaron and I sat like last night at dinner. Yeah, yeah. We sat the whole night with Jimmy. Yeah. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. We had a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everyone, everyone gives me shit because of how much I give him. But he he just tries to play cool on the potties. He is a devil of, uh, of it. He, he goes hard. He goes hard. He's a bit yeah, harder in real good. life, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, 100% now. 100%. He's, uh, no, Jimmy's a legend, man. He's an absolute yeah, legend. Good. So, uh, no, nah, that's good, boys. That's good. Boys, it's been an extremely impressive journey to date. Um, I'm really, really impressed uh, from what you've done. One final question I kind of had for you guys as well. I've got a few coming up uh, of questions. Yeah. We, we know where this is going to lead. But um, just in terms of the summit, right, like fresh in your mind of, of yesterday's session as well and, and all the sessions we ran through in there, um, Joe, it sounds like one of the big things for you was 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 understanding and, and kind of the realization around treating your portfolio like a business. But uh, what would you guys say kind of the, the key take? It's, it's so funny you hear so many different people who are at different points in their portfolio, um, some right at the start, some, you know, a long way through like you guys and some others like a long way through. Um, kind of the different things that really mm. sort of struck a core with them and, and, and really sunk in for them or they took a lot of value out of different sessions as well. I'm just really curious what you boys took out of it and, and were your favorite sessions or session of the day. Mm. Well, I started, but, you know, you you've probably got something else there to contribute. I mean, for me, it was the treat it like a business, yeah, okay. you know, yeah. um, see where you can sell at the right time, yep. you know, and then use that debt again, buy something else and grow. And um, the cash, yeah. I think the other thing was just being there with people, Sam, mm. like like-minded investors. Like it's so good to be able to sit down and talk to them. Yep. We're mm. all doing something similar or trying to do something similar. Yeah. Um, just some really great people. So relationship building as That's well. Awesome, really man. important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the APS team? Anyone think I should cut? Oh, uh, Jimmy. I think, uh, no, we love Jimmy. I think <laughs> yeah. we should give him a, a, a raise, you know. <laughs> no. um, I think he's, you know, fellow He's in slave labor, bro. I don't even pay the guy. He's some block system around here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> APS team's awesome. Man. That's why yeah. we're here. That's why we love working with you guys. I think, you know, Yes, the numbers are there. You produce what we need to, what we want to get, but it's the people, it's your journey. You know, we're learning from you, learning from you guys. That's, that's you know, we mm. connect to that story. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I know Joe was keen on some some of the data that you got out. Yeah, look, so many things I loved about the summit. Um, one, I, I mean, the sessions were really all of like most of them are really fantastic. But the ones that I uh, one that I really liked was Nick's session. He was yeah. really good. I know, you know, data, numbers, yeah, and all yeah, this yeah. sort of stuff. So I really like how obviously he's running your portfolio. It looks really, really good. So yeah, um, yeah it just took a lot, obviously a lot out of it. Love the stories that you brought out. You know, you called out all the people that were in the crowd yeah. and. I think it was Paul, the gentleman that was around 60 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how Pete, he's, uh, Pete, Pete. Pete, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. He won one and of the how, mentoring positions. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And how his mum, yeah. at the age of 84, 84, is investing. I mean, that is absolute crack. Crazy, it was amazing. Man. Crazy. Yeah. That was really, really good. Um, and yeah, like what Aaron said, obviously talking to people around you was really, really good. Yeah. Um, your team is fantastic. I yeah, appreciate that. Absolutely man. fantastic. I love that. Every guys. single person that we met. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely great to, to talk to. Yeah. It's a funny thing, hey, because like people talk about culture. It's a very like thrown around term, but like we are so protective and like we hire based on culture. Like there's a few roles that took. Uh, you can imagine a strategist role, right? Is a hard thing to hire. And like when I first was trying to hire, it was just like the Lukey Chusen without mm-hmm. the humor is not someone that I can spend a lot of time with. You know what I mean? It's like, like it's, I, 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 I can get on with anyone, yeah. but like I need someone that like has that other, so I can give him a bit of shit and he can give me yeah. a bit of shit, yeah. you know? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, 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 it's so funny, man, that like everyone we kind of hire, um, they kind of almost have to go through the tester of that so mm. that we can, I mean, you guys that see how you run the potty. I think a lot of people was like, I think they were waiting to see if we were the same in person as we were mm. in the potty. And it was just like, nearly 10 hours straight of just yeah, of the this, same. just going through the same <laughs> thing live. Yeah, you can't script yeah. that shit. So, uh, man, I really appreciate you saying that because yeah, yeah. I, I love the team, man. I love the crew and, and obviously what we're doing and the amount of people that we're able to help. Um, yeah, man, and it's just, yeah, it was really cool. I'm really mm. appreciative that you boys came up and, and shared that with us as well. Yeah, no, it was great. We're super great appreciative of coming. Yeah, yeah. So, and thanks for having us. Thanks for having us on the show. We, we loved this whole thing. We couldn't believe we were yeah. here. And awesome. It's just awesome. Ah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome, boys. That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate it. One um, final thing I want to sign off with. Thank you very much for – oh, actually, one other – one quick thing I'll kind of sign off with that as well is like what you – you both took a lot of value out of the uh, – treating your portfolio like a business. Mm-hmm. I believe that's because you are more experienced investors. So like – um. What level are we, Sam? We wondered about this. You know? a, a, a lot higher than Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you guys are doing well. Um, but it's, it's one of these things where, like, I think when you are earlier in your journey, some of these things don't sink in because you have, like, a lot of people haven't ridden through what you guys have ridden through, but you've had some, you've made some mistakes. You've had some uh, little hurt periods through there. Um, you know, you've been through different periods of, of, of now understanding when is the right time to be in and out of a cycle and things mm. like that. And I think sometimes that doesn't sink in straight away. And it doesn't sink in until you have a portfolio and you've been through some cycles or you've bought at the back end of a peak um, and things like that and really mm. understand the velocity of money and why I am so. Uh, pro treating your portfolio like a business and when something's done its job you clip it and you move Mm. on Uh, and so yeah I was kind of when you boys were both said it I was like yeah that's why because the portfolio we've just run through um, you know you guys can I'm sure you guys are even thinking in your head you know strategizing around exits and everything as well so uh, which I am very proud to will be on the journey for you helping Mm. you guys with that as well so to finish off boys um, key learnings and takeaways that you'd love to pass on or any any bit of advice or or piece of wisdom that you'd like to pass on to, to the audience, you know, anyone out there thinking of doing it or on their journey, like what, what are the biggest takeaways, learnings, advice you could pass on to the, to the next cohort coming through? Um, I think our first one was get a buyer's agent. Okay. Like honestly, if you've got some money there to do it, just yep. do it. Like don't second guess it. Um, we're to the point now that one day when we do buy another PPR, we'll probably even get a buyer's agent for yep. that too. Okay. You know, just mm. for the proven success of what you guys have done for yeah. us. Um, so do it, you know, get the right people around you, get the support. Um, you know, the answers are in the numbers that we've gone through. Yeah. And we won't, we don't second guess it. We just go for it now. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a massive takeaway. Mm. Yeah. Another one is around the renovations and you already sort of, you know, pointed to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you, if you have the know-how and the energy and time, yeah, go for it. Mm. But yeah, just don't try to cram everything in your life yeah. and and then, you know, hopefully upset your family or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it, obviously there is time and place for it. Obviously, yeah. if you can do it, go for it. Yeah. But yeah, don't try to completely or stretch yourself to do it. Yeah, man, that was one of my key takeaways with you guys as well. It's, it's like understanding where your time is best spent mm. and, and uh, man, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's looking at like 
could you be making better money somewhere else without the stress? And like a lot of people take the time off to go paint a house for, and it takes them two weeks because they're not a professional and it's not that good a job and it actually has cost them more mm. than because they haven't made what they would have made in their job than just outsourcing to someone else that would have done it in three days, no stress and the job's done at a higher spec and a higher level as well. And um, it's a mistake that a lot of people make very early, right? Like for you guys, it was, it was the third deal in, but it was cool to cut your teeth and learn it. Yeah. And a lot of time you don't, you don't learn it to that, to that, to that point as well. Um, but you know, for someone else who's maybe starting out and they're maybe making 50, 60, 70 grand a year, I don't know, depending on what it is, depending on the size of the reno and how much the reno costs because of where it's based, maybe it's an expensive reno that would cost a lot to outsource it. And then maybe it makes sense, but it's understanding what makes sense. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's understanding the ratios of whether it does make sense or not. And if it's a significant saving, do it. Um, if you're a low income, if it's not, outsource it and uh, and keep moving forward from that side as well because it's not the time uh, right now it's not a time of cheap trade so it is it is um you know uh, an ideal time to, to to weigh up that option and weigh up that cost it always is right at all times when you're doing these things it's always it's always weighing up the the pros versus cons um the other big ones guys um <laughs> probably my biggest one is when i reflect on like other potties and straight away you got some of your backstory both pretty much child labor you know what i mean like like working from a very young age and being pushed to work from a very young age with your parents i was exactly the same grew up on a farm literally was working when i was a young kid going around feeding the rabbits you know and i'm literally talking like a toddler like a bit bigger than a toddler enough that i could carry feed right right yeah. so i was doing that sort of things and uh you know I'd, I'd, even as a very small kid going my with my dad in the van at like 2 3 a.m to go take these things and ship them around everywhere but then when i was big enough i was cleaning all the stocks out and, and all mm. the rest of sort of things so like it's you know, and then I look at like Jakey, Paulie, all these other guys have sort of come through as well. And then you guys exactly the same. You you, you worked from a very young age. It's like Ray, ha rain, hail or shine. You went out for your $3 an hour, yeah. you know, for your 15 bucks a week to do the paper run. And uh, you weren't even getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> Joe, that's right. You know, so like it's- Or then go on to Euro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one Euro an hour, you know, it's like, but it breeds something different in you. You know what I mean? And sometimes like, um, not sometimes, almost always, these lessons, like whilst they are, um, they might feel costly or hurtful at the time. Well, maybe you don't even realize because you're young. A lot of time you don't. But like the lessons you get instilled from you from from that stuff is, uh, man, it's life lasting. You know yeah. what I mean? And it builds a certain degree of character. Um, mm. And yeah, man, I love that. It's just so funny. Every time I seem to do one of these things, everyone says exactly the same thing. Yeah. You know, who has achieved great success? So um, that probably feeds into my last one of um, the fact that you guys just kind of locked in and went hard and committed to this thing. Um, you came to me telling me what you wanted to do. And I changed your mindset and changed your paradigm. And then you guys were just like, you know what? Yes, we will do this. And you went hard and you weren't all talk and no action. You all talk and all action. And I loved it, you know, and, and the proof is in the pudding of what you guys have built out. And I'm super excited for this next phase because now I get to really step into my own. Sourcing deals is, is one thing, yeah? And we are, in my opinion, uh, the best in the business at the quality of the deals we source, locations that we put people in as well. But when it comes to the strategy piece of someone getting stuck and most BAs going, oh, it's all good, bro. Just wait for the value, wait for the rents or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, wait till you get a pay increase. No. Time. You throw curveballs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> time, time is not your friend, right? Yeah, in, in the market, time is not your friend. Um, yeah. And every year you're out of the market. Like for you guys, you're very much in the market when you took a year off. You know, you probably made uh, well over, you probably made what my Ferrari cost. You probably made that in a year in capital growth, you know, yeah. as a minimum. If we run through the numbers, you probably 100% would have made that or more. Yeah. Um, that is not something to sneeze at. So you didn't really take a year off, um, especially when you hit a cap sort of thing. Mm. And you enjoyed yourself, you recharge your batteries, and now we're going to go hard again. But I think it's, I think it's cool because... Um, now is the time where I get to push you guys properly of, well, you guys told me you want to keep building the portfolio. Here's, here's how we do it. And then changing that and then going to the next level. So I am really looking forward to getting you guys on probably mid to end of next year um, for a where are you now? Where are they now? And, uh, and seeing where we've taken you boys to in that time frame because uh, I know there's a lot of irons in the fire and there's a lot of things that we're looking to do. Um, and I'm really looking forward to revisiting this and, and giving the, list, the listeners the update on, uh, on, yeah, on where we ended up. That'd be awesome. We haven't even ended I'm up. excited. Yeah. Where, we, where we've gotten to, right? Because this yeah. journey, I don't think for you boys is going to stop anytime soon. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. Sounds that awesome. Sounds fun. Yeah. Bring us on. We'll do it. <laughs> boys, thank you very much for coming in and joining us. Are you happy to run a line of rapid fire? Okay, I'm a bit scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a few curveballs coming. There's always a few curveballs coming. We don't, we don't coming. know what these are. I have no idea. So. <laughs> Producer, give me some music. I love this stuff. All right, guys. What is the biggest goal that you're chasing? Me, I want to retire 2030. Beautiful. Replace my income. Beautiful. 
We're on the same journey with that. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Dream primary residence. What is it and where and how much? Um, we want to be, you know, we want to have a house. <laughs> it's somewhere in Melbourne. You guys are dancing. You like the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we want to be somewhere in the city and, yeah, have some, you know, yard. It's around, I don't know, two to three mil, maybe yeah. four. I don't okay. know. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's level up. We'll go to four, all right? Yep. Dream holiday location. All over. We, we've traveled to a lot of countries. I think I've been to 38. I just want Whoa. to be able to just more of it. All the time. More Whoa. of it. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. way. It's so like I yeah. went for properties of age. You went for countries of age. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're pretty much there. I think we did that right at the beginning of our. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Early. So you got in front. You got in That's front. It. That's beautiful. <laughs> Dream job. Work for myself okay. in property. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Work for myself in okay. something. In something. Yeah. Okay. All right. I love it. Favorite food, boys? Asian. Asian. All, all Asian. Yeah. All Asian food. All Asian? Yeah, yeah we are similar, very much. Are. Very similar. I'll leave it some curveballs. Yeah, the yeah, same thing. Well, you know, after 20 years. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Favorite alcoholic beverage? Oh, it's going to be similar here. Look, wine, I don't drink much anymore. Okay. But yeah. wine, same. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. We don't so, really drink much though. So yeah. you went on the margaritas last night with uh, with myself and the rest no, of the crew. we're fresh. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys were saying good for today. Yeah. 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 Alcohol free beers. I love it. All right, boys. True or false? You happy to jump into this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aaron, in high school, you once beat Ian Thorpe in a 50 meter freestyle race. False. <laughs> Joe, come on, close. man. You told me that. How, it was close? It was, you were close. You were close. <laughs> I heard you were a good swimmer. Nearly. Nearly. Something you nearly. nearly. All right. Joe, you almost didn't move to Australia because you had to leave your harem of wives back from the Eastern <laughs> Bloc. <laughs> False. Oh, <laughs> boys. Come on. My intel was bad. Normally I'm pretty good. My intel was bad. Well, you need to fire the person who's giving you this intel. Who <laughs> was that on the APS too? Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> oh, boys. That's all I've got for the rapid fire. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, guys, I'm, I'm sure the listeners would have loved this story. There's so much gold in here, so much juice. You guys have been on an incredible journey. It's funny. I. I Man, I, I didn't realize like how quickly we did this thing and sort of built it out and and uh, running back through it and seeing that timeline, it's uh, it's crazy sometimes what you can build in the time frame when you really set your mind to it. So two mil net equity you boys have built and you're only realistically, oh yeah, one deal a couple of years before, but you're really only two years into like proper, proper accumulation into this thing. Hats off to you boys. This is amazing stuff and I'm, I'm super pumped to get you back on uh, in a little bit for uh, for an update on where you guys are. Thank you and thanks for all the help. Yeah. Uh, Couldn't have done pleasure, it without you, Sam. Absolute <laughs> pleasure, boys. Absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. Well, listeners, I hope you loved the episode. If you did, make sure you send it on to someone else who also would take some great value out of it and undoubtedly some inspiration for what these two great blokes have done. If you did enjoy it as well and you're enjoying all the content, make sure you jump over to all the socials at Australian Property Scout and follow us there. If you're not subscribed and following us on whatever listening platform you're listening to this on, make sure you also hit the subscribe button. And until next week, guys, that's another Scouting Australia podcast.